Corey, we do this thing called jazz hands like this. So you got to do jazz hands. There you go. There you go. Corey, go, you got to keep doing it. Corey's doing jazz hands. Walter's doing jazz hands. We are live. Walter's doing jazz hands with uh, the My guests of honor, the knives. Yeah, we are. We are live. I hope you have your big girl panties on. This is episode, I believe it's uh, 308. Yes, 308 of the Who Move My Freedom podcast coming to you live from the Strange Media Studios. That's me with the big head uh, in Gainesville. <laughs> and our special guest tonight is Corey. There he goes from Microtech Knives. How's Welcome. it going? Welcome, Corey. You were just saying off air, this is your first podcast ever, right? This is. This is. Okay. It'll, be, it'll be fun and interesting. Yeah, Walter, we are popping that cherry on Corey. <laughs> for the, as, as podcasts oh, go he's, he's here he didn't have technical difficulties or anything yeah yeah, oh, yeah Corey, no. it's, only, it's only downhill from here yes okay so uh, yeah okay <laughs> yeah um let's see so that's you know we're gonna have Corey from microtech here he's gonna answer questions we're gonna talk about microtech and all that kind of stuff if you guys are not familiar with them the they uh predominantly do this kind of stuff boom there you go uh, I jacked these knives from uh, Babyface P. I don't want to. I don't want to. I well, I, I don't have one of those that's officially Microtech, but I do have uh, <clears throat> knockoff. Oh, oh, we're gonna talk about that, Corey. You can call the FBI right now. Yeah. I'll give you. you got him on speed dial, so. Yeah, I will give. I will give you Walter's address. It will yeah, be awesome. send, yeah, oh. send, send the knife Gestapo over. Yeah. yeah, awesome for the show to get Walter arrested live on air. <laughs> oh, that'd be a that'd be like a viral video for the ages. Yes, uh, Walter <laughs> does absolutely. Yeah, I you know maybe we can get them to rough him up a little bit. <laughs> Bring yeah. that chaser of, uh, that was on last night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Walter does have official Microtech stuff though. He does. He does. Oh yeah, 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 so. yeah. I, I got to get it. I've got to get one of those that that model in the actual blade. I just haven't pulled the trigger on it. I know. I actually know that. So. I know a guy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll we'll pimp the things. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's you know, that's why we have them on here. So we we've got Corey. We'll talk about things. You guys can let us know what you want to talk about as well. Um, you know, <laughs> actually, just hit us up in the chat and let us know the things, questions, and things like that that you guys want to ask Corey. It's uh, what's today? Today's a Thursday. Um, of course, we've got more gun control stuff and all that that was announced last night. I'm sure some people will want to talk about that. I guess Diane Feinstein was throwing up some more uh, anti anti gun stuff out there, right? New bands, new bands. Did you? Did it, either one of you guys hear about this? Oh, yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, uh, a bunch of, and obviously a bunch of the you know uh, Instagram you know big guys I follow on there, and you know they uh, they started posting a lot about it with the new assault weapons ban. Yeah. And um, the thing is, so here, I'll throw up something in our internal chat so you can see that, Corey. And uh, and I'll throw it up here so that other folks out there can, can get a look at what we're talking about. So the thing is, and they're trying to include um, SB tactical braces and all that, oh, those huh? pistol braces in what they're talking about. Very interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're not going to they're not going to let anything get away. You know. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, they're going to yeah. try anyways. But we've been here. We've done this already. This is old for for all the younglings out there that were still sucking on their thumb. Back then. Um, um, this is old. This is old. Just revisited all over again. Yeah. I mean, well, it's kind of similar. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I was gonna say it's kind of similar to uh, you know some of the new stuff that are proposed. Or I, it's actually gonna pass in California, where you know you're gonna have, you know it's gonna require you know permits and you know and background checks for ammo purchases, and you can only purchase so much. And so, you know, it's, it's all these little, you know, little things that, you know, they, they pick and choose to try and get it, you know, a little bit at a time. Yeah. So before, before we get into uh, microtech, Corey, um, let's, you know, where are you guys on the second amendment for it or again, it, <laughs> we are very is... much for the second amendment. <laughs> Amen. Okay, good. <laughs> well, the same, the same people who want to take your or guns want to take your knives also. That's true. That that yeah. that whole um well I forget the organization used to be that used to be the the real big anti gun one. When you looked at their agenda, it went all the way down to little little dinky pocket knives. Yeah. So because you know technically this is very uh, uh you know in the world of scariness this is like the scariest thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, there's definitely there's definitely some states where uh, some of the knives we make are not allowed. So uh, absolutely, yeah, and that should not be. That should not be. Yeah. 
when you start doing that, all of a sudden it just became this like atomic knife. Yeah. I don't know what it is. You know, it's so Big, bad, scary knife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with a, you know, with attachments, you saw that whole meme, right, Corey? Oh, with, yes. Yes. With the, cha the chainsaw. I need one of those. Yeah. <laughs> chainsaw. You guys should have done one, you know, <laughs> you, know, a, or something. you know, we actually, we don't make them super often, but we actually have some like really large, um, version of some macro versions of some of the knives we make. Oh, really? <laughs> you know, honestly, honestly, I'll just take one of those and, and just duct tape it around an AR barrel. Call it uh -huh. a yeah. Nice big I was going to say, you should make it out the front bayonet. <laughs> out the front bayonet. Call I'll, it the Hank. I'll pass, I'll the, pass Hank. the message along. Yes. We'll call it Hankinator. Yeah, there you go. See, Walter, I, you, I, you I, can I'll learn get... from Corey. You can learn from Corey, Walter. <laughs> he'll, he'll figure it out pretty soon. Don't yeah. listen to what he says. So Walter, so Walter manufacturer, he he Walter is the owner of Safety Harbor Firearms. I don't know if you've right. you've ever heard of them. I have. Oh, okay. You're welcome, Walter. Corey's heard of Safety Harbor. Yeah, well we uh well we actually <laughs> did a little bit of history with Microtech and Safety Harbor Firearms way, way, way back when. Oh really? First firing pins we used in our guns were made by Microtech, actually. Really? Oh, um, interesting. Yeah, Tony Tony volunteered to do it and I think he regretted it in the end, but because it, it was a pain in the ass, but um, <laughs> yeah. so who's Tony for the rest of us who don't you know know people on the first name basis? Um, yeah, Tony Marfone. Huh? Tony Marfone, yes. right? I'm yeah. It. So Tony, uh, Tony Marfione, or uh, as some, some people know him as Anthony is his first name. Some people know him as Tony, but Anthony Marfione is the uh, is a uh, co CEO or co owner CEO of Microtech Knives. Okay. Awesome. So this is probably a good place to segue into that, Corey. Uh, first of yep. all, like, uh, you know, tell us who you are, what you do at Microtech, how you started working there, and then we'll jump into the background with Microtech. Yeah, so, um, so obviously my name's Corey. I actually uh, do PR and sales for Microtech Knives. Um, originally started not in the gun industry or the knife community or anything like that at all. It just kind of, you know, I just got lucky and it happened um, when I was introduced um, super, super early twenties. Like when I was 20, 21 is when I was kind of introduced to firearms and just became obsessed with it. Um, got into sort of the competitive shooting and things like that, but I was actually a tennis pro. Um, okay. and so when I, you have um, that tennis pro jaw, man, that is, I'm not that's not what it is. <laughs> um, when, but so when, when I kind of, you know, I kind of eventually got burnt, burnt out on that lifestyle. Um, still love it. I still play competitively, uh, still playing a bunch of teams, but when I got burned out on kind of doing that for a living, um, I segued into the firearms community. Um, and so, um, basically how I was, how I guess Anthony found me was via Instagram. Um, I had started, you know, I'd started doing some shooting videos and some com kind of competitive shooting videos. And I guess you could call some of them trick shots, um, some kind of cool stuff like that. I did a couple of cool, um, videos with some people, you know, I think post Malone, um, I did a big one with him. Okay. Um, yeah. We know post yeah. Malone. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, did a video with him that at least for me with my, thousand Instagram followers went kind of semi viral. Um, and, uh, so then, you know, he sort of saw a bunch of that stuff, reached out to me. Um, then I met him at this year's, uh, this past year's, uh, blade show in Atlanta. Okay. So we met in person for the first time, hit it off and just became really, really good friends. Um, and so then when I finally started, you know, when I finally segued, I'm um, at my previous uh, job, um, which was basically still doing PR, um, into, um, you know, I segued out of that and, you know, we kind of moved into the microtech realm and uh, became part of the knife community. So that's, okay. that's kind of how I how I ended up here. Awesome, awesome. Post Malone, uh, Walter. By the way, Post Malone is a rapper. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Post Malone. Yeah. 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 He's fairly he's fairly popular. Yeah. Walter okay. Corey was around with Methuselah. That was <laughs> that was the first rapper that Walter ever heard about <laughs> way back in the day. No, Post Malone is a rapper. As a matter of fact, that's Babyface. We met Corey through Babyface, Patrick, Babyface P. Okay. Right? You guys you guys were doing that helicopter thing together, right? Yeah. So we did um oh. we did a helicopter, it was like a helicopter experience um with uh a company called uh, Shoot and Move LLC. Um mm -hmm. and so basically I was introduced to them by a company called Tier Defense, who um, did the advocate for Coley on Noir. They've done, you know, they did the T11 pistol with uh, Mr. Guns and Gear. Um, okay. And then from Prevectus Group, they've done a pistol with him. So, I, you know, I've done a bunch of shooting stuff with them. And they kind of introduced me to Shoot Move. Um, you know, started, I took a couple classes with them and then went and did the helicopter um, experience because, you know, shooting guns out of helicopters just absolutely sounds amazing. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so that's where him and me met. Um, when we first got there, he pulled out a Microtech and was talking about it. And it was kind of just history from there. You know, I was like, hey, actually, I work for Microtech. And, okay. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then here we are. Yeah, yeah. Babyface is good. You know, he's a good he's a good front man for the whole Hank Strange situation over here. So oh, yeah, he, he yeah. was. It was funny when I met him. I was like, I don't know where, but I know you from somewhere. I was like, you look so familiar. And it was actually from, I guess, the Krebs. Um, I think the KV thirteen video you guys did. Oh, okay. Um, that was where I remember to see. You know, he showed up uh, on camera. Oh, cool. All right. Yeah. yeah. See, he's a he's famous. I know. He's famous now. He's famous now. Um, he, he wanted to send his regards. He can't be here tonight. He's the one that hooked all of this up. But I have to tell you something. Babyface P is like, you ever heard of Dungeons and Dragons? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's one of these Dungeons and Dragons guys now, apparently. <laughs> so Thursday is his game game night. Thursday game night. Yeah. yeah. So he's sitting around somewhere here in Gainesville with a cloak and other Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> nerds. Got the, got the wand out. Yeah, yeah, they're doing their thing, you know, by, by the power of Grayskull or whatever, whatever it is. <laughs> so shout, shout out to Babyface. He did want to be here. Uh, his knives are here, and he wanted to say what's up to you. I appreciate it. You'll have to send it, send it right back to him. I'm sure I'll, I'll connect with him. Yeah, absolutely. And so uh, let me see. So, so tell us then about Microtech. How did that like, uh, get going? Where did that come from? Well, um, so originally, uh, Anthony Marfion, he was, uh, he was working for Knight's Armament. Um, and he designed, in 1993, he basically designed a prototype, which would later become the UDT. And he passed it around at uh, this very, very large, I believe it was actually called the, the Knife Guild um, in Florida, and mm-hmm. ended up actually taking, I think, close to 10,000 orders for this prototype. Wow. Then, yeah, so then in 1994, Microtech itself was actually founded, and that was when uh, they started producing the UDT. Um, that was actually the first knife, and it was a automatic folder, which I believe he, he actually has one. Um, might be handy. Uh, who who has one? Oh, Walter? Me? Yeah, Walter. Oh. Yeah, so. Had okay, one cool. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so. Um, I mean, this so, is, to me, this is, to me, automatic knife. This is, when, yeah. I see, when I see automatic knife, I think this. It's still, you know, it's still considered a folder, but, uh, but you know, some of them like the UDTs and our LUDTs and a couple models that I'll show here in a little bit. Um, they, some of them do still basically function as autos with, uh, with buttons. Yeah. Right. So I think there's a little bit of a difference, like uh, these ones that I've got here. Um, these are the out the fronts, right? So, yes. <laughs> yeah, so there's kind of a difference with that for all the people that like the high techery of being able I'm, to. Do I'm, I'm huge on them. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Right. So, uh, so, so Anthony, Florida boy, that's good news. I yeah. like that. Okay. <laughs> started out here in Florida. And, um, so he started out making these knives, a whole bunch of people. Was this like special ops guys who were ordering these knives? Um, I think I'm not entirely sure. I think originally it was, um, just, a, you know, it was just a bunch of, you know, a bunch of people who, who really liked the design and, and he just, he started making them. Um, obviously, very early on in Microtech's uh, history, uh, we started making knives very specifically for special forces units. Um, and it was kind of, it was pretty cool um, the way we went about it because obviously, you know, they're doing some of the most extreme things. Um, and so some of our knives that ended up getting used by special forces and still do today, um, you know, we basically used them and, and they just kind of beat the crap out of them and, and tested them for us. And, um, and that, you know, so we, we still, we actually still have a really good relationships with a lot of a lot of military units we you know do stuff for them every once in a while in terms of you know knife models and things like that but uh but yeah so i mean we we've kind of hit the entire kind of spectrum of of knife user okay so let me just so walter i know that you've been in florida for a long time do you yeah. remember all of this stuff that we're talking about here with no. the beginning of okay no like I, said, I met i met uh i met anthony at knob creek probably in Maybe 2000, 2001. Mm-hmm. Okay. Something like that. Oh, actually, it was right when I was starting to do my, uh, started making uppers. So it's probably more towards the end of 2002. Okay. So, um, yeah, we just met through someone else and and we just started talking. He goes, Oh, yeah, send it to me. I'll you know, make stuff, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Okay. So he made some firing pins for me for everybody that doesn't know that. 
Okay, so there's some Microtech SHF fifties out there. Is what yeah, actually, saying. the first uh, <laughs> the first fifty uppers had those firing pins made by Microtech. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. You got you got it. So are those like serial number uh, zero I, one up to zero fifty? Yeah, I don't one. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't even think I have one of those anymore. Actually. Oh, okay. There was nothing wrong with the firing pins themselves. Um, the way they were made, it was just the design was not probably spot on. So uh, I've changed it a lot since then. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, Early days. Anthony had nothing to do with the design. That's a, uh, that's the monkey here. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. So that's that's cool. So how did? So I'm guessing that Microtech started what 90s to that early zeros when? Te technically, Microtech started. It was found in 1994. Okay. Um, and then by by 1995, so that when 1994 was when we introduced the UDT. Um, by 95, we had introduced, which I'll show this again, um, we had introduced the Halo, and this is obviously the, the Halo 6, um, oh, so it, nice. it had quite a few different um, kind of iterations. Yeah, um, I like that Tonto. Oh yeah, it's awesome. Uh, the original, so the original um, Halo was designed and released in two, uh, 1995, and then by 1999, we had released the Ultratech, which is one of the ones I believe that uh, you've got, Hank, um, and it's something uh, sort of along the lines of, of this, okay. um, like and this, this is actually to this, yeah, right to here. this day, this is still our most popular knife. Okay. So um, this one, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say, just because the size, you know, it fits. It's uh, kind of a great size for a lot of hand sizes and a lot of kind of uses. Um, fits in the pocket really easy because it's really slim. So um, it's, it's to this day still our most popular knife. Okay, so I'm just trying to figure this out. Uh -huh. um, if there's if there's names or whatever on these things, they're really 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 tiny. So old dudes like me um, <laughs> don't really have an easy time seeing it. But how do I? How do you tell what you're dealing with here? Um, it it depends. It depends on what year. Um, sometimes uh, they some, sometimes there are different places. Uh, the particular one you have on the side with the Microtech logo, right on the blade, right in the middle, it should tell you the model, and it'll say uh -huh. that particular one will say Ultratech. It's one of our clear tops. Okay, so let me. I'm gonna get out my phone so I can magnify it here. Get your glasses. Get your reading glasses on, you old fart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it says uh, Ultra Tech D slash E. Yeah. So double edge. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. And then this one, I'm, I'm guessing the, some of them come like this in this clear see-through case kind of deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we you know, we've made some special runs of those, um, and basically mm -hmm. we just used uh, clear tops uh, just so you could kind of see the internals. Um, Sort of like, you know, like me, I was one of those kids that liked taking things apart and putting them back together. Um, and so a lot of people like just seeing inside and seeing how they work um, and, you know, seeing what kind of makes them, makes them flick. Yeah. So, okay. uh, so that was the idea behind those. And, and they were obviously super, super popular. Right. Okay. Yeah, that is good to do. You know, mm -hmm. I was just curious about that because I'm sure there's like a, a, a robust, um, like, used market and stuff like that going for these. So... Yeah, what I mean, obviously, kind of, what kind of, like uh, warranty and stuff like that do you guys have on it. So uh, we have a limited lifetime warranty. So, uh, okay. you know, pretty much any um, just any normal, you know, wear and tear kind of stuff, you know, you know, blade sharpenings, cleanings, um, you know, screws replaced. Typically, as long as we're still making the model of knife, um, you're, you know, you're typically good to go um, with anything. Obviously, you know, it's one of those every situation can be a little unique. Um, but uh, but it's it's a pretty in my opinion it's a pretty robust warranty. We'll uh, we like to try and take care of people. Okay, so it's a good thing for people because I know that um, you know there's there's always people out there that are price conscious. So yeah. that's one of the ways that you can get into these getting them used and stuff like that, right? Yeah, I mean it's um it's funny because like I said I, you know I didn't come from the knife the knife community. I'm I'm still very very new to it. Um, and the aftermarket or secondhand market for Microtech is probably one of the most like insane things I've ever seen. Um, yeah. It's just just how popular it is and, and how active people are on it. So it's it's a good place if you know if you're trying to find them you know for cheaper. It's definitely a good place to to find some. Okay. All right. Cool. Walter, if you want to jump in here at any time, let me know if you want to ask some questions. Okay. All right. No, yeah. I'm good at the moment. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so you guys start. He started out in Florida. Where are you guys now? How'd you wind up there? Mm -hmm. Um, so we actually have two facilities. Our main facility is in um, Fletcher or Asheville, North Carolina. Um, so in, I believe, 2005, when uh, after kind of all the craziness of Hurricane Katrina, um, that was when they decided to move away from Florida 
um, and then actually built a facility in uh, Bradford, Pennsylvania. Okay. Uh, then, yeah, and so then also uh, not too long after moved uh, moved as well to North Carolina, and that's where our main facility is. Um, obviously, the the Bradford, PA locations strictly manufacturing, um, and then everything else is entirely done um, in the uh, Asheville, North Carolina location. Okay, cool. Yeah, I see Razor yeah. JB was real happy about that. Yeah, I'm actually um, I actually live in Charlotte, so. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Very cool. All right. So um, now one of the things I wanted to get into was, uh, and and Walter alluded to this, and I think he has one of them there. Somewhere in the history, you guys actually made guns. Yes. In uh, 2007. Mm -hmm. Okay. 2007. I think Walter's off to get something. Let's see what Walter's coming. Yes. Yeah. He's coming so, up. He's, yeah. Um, in 2007, uh, Microtech uh, started what was called the MSAR um, division, um, and it was actually the first um, is the first firearms division for any knife company, um, I guess ever. And uh, basically, it's a bullpup style rifle called the STG 556. Okay, looks a lot yeah. like a Styrog. Yeah, there's some, uh, you know, it's definitely some, uh, you know, only so much I guess you can do with a bullpup. But uh, these are these are actually pretty rare now. They're they're pretty they're pretty cool. I saw one. I'm actually on my way to uh, the um, helicopter event that I did. I actually saw one at a gun store um, that was brand new. It was pretty pretty cool. If I oh wow okay, I could have dropped the, I think like the two or three grand they wanted for it. I, I probably would have. <laughs> oh okay, yeah. Walter's very proud of this. I see the STG five five six on it. And uh, Walter, tell us about this thing, man. Where'd you get this from? Uh, well, I ordered it right from Microtech. Um, Let's see. Back when I back when this was available for to order, there were no uh, none of the um, if you're if it looks like a styre because it's kind of patterned off that. But there were no there were no Austrian styres available. It was back before they were selling them again here. Mm -hmm. So when the when they when they went out for orders, I saw them at shot that year, and I said, like, "Oh, that's pretty cool." So I went ahead and I when I shot my wad and I ordered the. Uh, the whole shooting match, the $2,000 uh, box with the, the rifle, four mags, cool-ass knife, um, and some other stuff. There's a knife. Is that the knife you were showing us? No, no, no. no. Well, okay. Well, Do we get to see the knife, Walter? Hang on a second. Hang on. Yeah. Whip it out. So, I don't say these yeah. words to you often. So go ahead. In, the, in, the, in the large uh, Pelican-type case, a lot, aside from the rifle and the four mags, there's this big... Early thick, full tag. Yeah. Oh, okay. Big stick and uh, a yeah. uh, uh, knife with this okay. really cool sheath. This is actually the um, curry. Is that how you say that? Curry here. The curry. Is that how you say it? Okay. Right. Yeah. Hold right. it up a little bit. There you go. Let me get the logo side going over here. Boom. Okay. okay. MSR. Yeah. So if if um, people are collecting these, that's the most desirable. Like the box. The case it came, the case it came in, gun and the knife. I I would think so because it's complete. I would, I would imagine the entire package is probably, especially if you're a collector. I would imagine the entire package is, is optimal. Okay. Okay. I went yeah. ahead. I went ahead being a lefty and bought the left hand, the left hand bolt and stuff also, mm -hmm. um, because that's the way I that's the way it is. Actually, right now it's set up though for right handed folks, so I don't know what the heck's going on with that. But, uh, <laughs> and uh, it, it comes with an optic built in. Yes. Okay. There yep. you go. The like the one the one power built in optic. I think it is. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. we we did have uh, I ha I have seen obviously the ones that have rails that had uh, other you know other uh, optics on them, ACOGs, you know think you know just other types of red dots as well. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, I I opted to try to keep it as well. I just yeah. like the style. It works really well. It's a really uh, it's a really easy to use optic. I mean, it's it works and it works well. So okay, that way, yeah. So. And what's up with the magazines? Are those? Does it use specific uh, proprietary uh, magazines, or how does that work? I believe this this guy uses a, it has a uh, proprietary mag. Yeah. So we uh, we had uh, we had a bunch of smoked um, MSR STG five five six mags that were proprietary from us uh, for okay. these. Yeah, yeah. So you, like I said, that set that I bought has a, um, I believe a ten, twenty, thirty, and then the forty. 
yeah. Or your mag, so yeah. Yeah. How many of these rifles did you guys make, Corey? Do you know? Um, I don't know. If I had to guess, I'd probably say uh, in the thousands. I don't know if we ever. I don't know if we crossed ten thousand. Um, but uh, definitely, it was not a not a huge number. So they're okay. definitely. I mean, they're they are not a whole lot. Of, you know, when you see them. Um, I mean, I was surprised when I saw one. So they're they're not very readily, you know, available. It's it's pretty it's pretty uh, rare to see them pop up anymore. Yeah. Did yeah, you when you when, when you saw that one? Did it have the case? Did it have the knife? Um, I, be I believe it did. Um, it was oh. sitting. It had a bunch of stuff with it, but it was sitting on a wall, technically by itself when uh when I saw it. Mm -hmm. Um, but and it was I mean it was perfect. It was brand new. Yeah, I, I would like to use this knife, but if I use it, then it won't be all purdy again, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> so it's basically a safe queen. Well, I mean, the knife is, the, the gun's been shot. I mean, I don't have any problem shooting the gun. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they shoot well. Yeah, this is uh, number 375, actually, so. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Walter's pretty proud of this, so, you know. I, but, I can um, see that. Yeah. I mean, if you ever need somebody to, to take it and just, you know, test it for you, make sure it runs yeah. the way it's supposed <laughs> to, you just let me know. Well, here's the thing, Corey. You should come to Florida and do something with us. Bring out some oh, knives. 100%. I'd love to. Yeah. You know, um, I know I know that you're a shooter. I, I'm not sure if you've done a lot of shooting with like full auto stuff and all that, but you know, we could we can arrange some things. I mean, has anybody ever shot enough full auto, even if I have? Like <laughs> no, I don't think you no, ever no, can shoot enough full auto. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Full yeah. auto never. relief. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Never enough. So, we, you know, we can arrange that. We can come out. We can uh, we can do something about it. Talk a little history. Oh, yeah, let's do it. On it. So, okay, what is that you're showing us now, I Walter? Stuck, I stuck the knife in the seat. Okay, very cool. It's, uh, it's cool. I mean, it's a nice it's a nice setup for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's, you know, it's sort of like you, you were talking about, you know, we, we made some of those small parts, uh, at least from what I see and from what I can sort of tell from the history. Um, the company has has advanced um, exponentially the the machinery, the, you know, kind of the the possibilities of things that we can create is pretty much endless now. Um, so it, it's kind of cool to see, you know, not coming from, you know, that kind of background, you know, not making a lot of things in my hands. Um, we can pretty much, if we can, if we can imagine it, we can make it. So yeah, uh, yeah. that's fun to see. It's fun to see all the, actually see all the processes that go in, into everything that you wouldn't normally see kind of from the outside. Mm -hmm. Do you know why they got into to making this? Um, I actually don't know. I mean, obviously I know, you know, Anthony has been a, he's a you know, huge second amendment supporter. I mean, obviously microtech as a whole, um, does, you know, you know, in a lot of facets. Um, and if, you know, if I had to guess, I'd, I'd say it was uh, just for the passion of, uh, you know, seeing a design and, and, you know, trying to, trying to make it better. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure like, Wal like Walter was saying that they, you couldn't really get, um, you know, you, there, there were certain guns you just couldn't get during that time, and maybe guys yeah. wanted wanted them to be available. So that's pretty cool. And then obviously, you got they got out of it. So do you know the reasons why they got out of it? Or um, they they decided um, they really honestly decided to go back to their roots, and really we you know we just decided to focus on the knives again. Um, mm -hmm. obviously, MSR is still um active at Microtech. We have. Uh, pending, but we have uh, suppressors, which I think, I think a good portion of people who follow us on Instagram have seen some of, um, okay. so we've got some suppressors going through destructive testing right now that are just absolutely fantastic. Uh, oh, okay. I've shot a bunch of suppressors and at least of all the ones that I've shot, it is the quietest, the quietest nine mil suppressor that I've shot. Okay. So, so it's, we can uh, look forward to some MSAR suppressors. Somewhere. Yeah, we can look soon. I don't know exact ETAs on that, but, uh, They've uh, they've been they've been going through the through the ringer for some destructive testing. Well, if, so. if, you need, if you need some innocent victims to test them, I mean, we <laughs> what you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, we yeah uh, we do a lot of testing. Um, you know, I hope they're doing uh, something five five six because you know the the ultimate accoutrement for that for that bullpup that Walter has over there is of course a suppressor now. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're to have one. I, yeah. I hope so. So yeah. I know if I uh, say if we do decide to make a five five six, I'll know which one I'm getting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, you got to get the you got to get the uh, five five six suppressor for that, Walter. Oh no, I'm in I'm in the market for some more suppressors. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, okay, so you guys decided to stick to the knives. So, uh, what are you guys doing with the knives nowadays? So we uh, you know, obviously we we phase models in and out. Um, 
And mm -hmm. but obviously, you know, right now we've got a pretty robust kind of selection. We've brought a lot of things back. Um, a couple of months ago, we announced we were bringing back colors, um, which yeah. we hadn't done for a while, which kind of people went crazy about, you know, on social media and stuff with us. So um, a lot of our knives, you know, kind of come in all sorts of different, you know, different colors, got yeah. oranges and reds and, uh, you know, blues. Yeah, I like the blue. That's a nice oh, yeah. blue that you guys do. Um, and then obviously, like this is actually an LUDT, so it's a large UDT. It's in a, a pretty sick red. Um, and so this one is automatic. Ah. Yeah, okay. so we, we brought the colors back. Um, obviously, we, we've created new models. We have uh, some, some of my favorite, my personal favorite knife, the Combat Troton. Um, it's quite a bit bigger. So the ones that you have, Hank, um, like this red, red ultra tag, you can sort of see there's a, there's a pretty good size difference mm -hmm. on those. Get my fingers out of the way. Um, and it's this, this is, this is my, my jam. John Wick got me hooked on this one. Oh, okay. Was that in the movie? It was. So, um, we actually have been in all the micro, uh, all the, uh, John Wick movies. So in the first one, um, he used an ultra tech in the second movie. He actually used a combat throat on, um, when he's in the, uh, the gun room, he, okay. uh, pulls it out of the, pulls it out of the case and, and shows it off. He stabs, uh, stabs the uh, common with it. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's good. Any scene, any scene with common getting stabbed up, I'm a fan of. It's awesome. Yeah. And when they, <laughs> is, that the, is that the one that he left in him? Yeah. It's funny. Oh, it's the, oh, I would know because uh, common kicks it out of his, kicks his knife, uh, kicks uh, John Wick's knife out of his hand, and then he st uh, just to add insult to injury, stabs uh, common with his own knife. With his own knife, but common oh, wasn't God. using a microtech. He was not. Oh, he wasn't see, there enough. you go. Don't use the micro tech. Get stabbed with your own knife. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, I, I think we can. Um, I think we're we're good with like the background and stuff like that, Walter. Yeah. If you have anything, I'm gonna try to keep an eye here on on the chat and get some people's questions and stuff like that. David Cardinal said, "Is Microtech working on a production level affordable answer to the deadlock?" I know one of the comments I see people saying here, mm -hmm. of course, is Microtech is kind of a, a higher up on the scale. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're, we're always, uh, we're always working on, on new designs and things like that. I don't know, uh, specifically, I don't, I'm not entirely sure what, uh, the deadlock runs for. Uh, but, um, we're all, you know, obviously always kind of trying to improve, improve processes and, you know, and, uh, you know, make things as good as we can. I, I will say one of the kind of many comments I guess we get from people who kind of put a microtech in their hand the first time is actually like you feel the quality. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously I know I work for microtech, but I can, I can say that from having not been, not been a knife guy and microtech was the first thing I was introduced to. And I, you know, was kind of hooked from the get go just because of how, how insanely high quality they were. But, um, but we should, you know, we've got some, some cool new stuff coming in 2019. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's have, let's, if you don't mind, let's yeah. have the uh, price co uh, conversation a little bit. Mm -hmm. We have this here all the time. It's not just with Microtech, yeah. with uh, lots of people that come on. Uh, Walter, what do you think about the, uh, the, the, the price conversation here that we're having? Do you, I mean, do you find this is the high end of the scale? Look, I've seen, oh, yeah. I've seen uh, $10,000 knives, $100,000 mm -hmm. knives. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, you look at the Microtech. This one here has been in my pocket practically every freaking day that that I don't forget and leave it in my pants in a pile of dirty clothes. But um, and and aside from being in full of lint, which I need to blow out with some air, um, the thing works, you know, and and it doesn't it's not falling apart. The screws aren't screwing out. Um, if you look at it, the way they're made, all the screws are specially made for the Microtech. So that takes a lot. I look at that and I go, damn. Yeah, I can see you're giving it your machining eye. Yeah, yeah. So and just the way, I mean, yeah. you, you look at this, you see that I give it no special treatment, and um, it's held up to the task. Right. I mean, have, you, have you ever sent it in for servicing? Sorry, Corey. Um, I, I noticed that there's one, when I look at the screws for, the, for here, there's one that doesn't match the other. So I don't know if it went in at one point. I can't remember. You know, I'm so old, you know. Um, but, uh, but, um, it probably could have it stand for a good sharpening, but, um, but, um, aside from that, I mean, it works. So, you know, some people don't carry their microtechs every day. They 
put them in a place and they keep they baby them, them. Yeah, which you should but, never do. If you're gonna if you're gonna spend if you're gonna buy something good and obviously it's gonna cost a little bit more, why are you gonna leave it locked up somewhere? Wait, I know. Maybe you don't want to lose it. Well, I, and then speaking, of, I, lost, I lost my first one. Yeah, that's like a nightmare. And when I lost my first one, it felt like I lost a friend. <laughs> I was just oh, like, it would, it would ruin my week if I lost one of mine. I, yeah. I was just like, oh, you, I can't freaking believe this. Shh, shh. Yeah, and it that, hurts. That's gotta hurt. That's gotta. Yeah, hurt. And and and, it, and yeah, and then when I when I went lost a couple times. One time I went in the wash. It was in the dryer going bang, ba bang, ba bang, ba bang, ba bang. Ba bang. <laughs> now a lot of people would start crying about that, but hey, I've done that with bullets. Yeah, the t it's called the tumble test. <laughs> I, you know, I've seen under you know under our warranty um, kind of program and you know repair program. I, you know, I've seen knives come in for the first time in uh, almost two decades. Um, you know, so that's that's kind of you know that's it's one of those things. It depends on what you're going to use it for, but um, you know, a knife that lasts me 20 years, um, I'm happy to you know I'm happy to pay a couple hundred dollars for. <laughs> yeah, um, you know it. it, it yeah. Yeah, it's hard to describe. You know, there's so many choices out there now with knives. Um, but if you want something that, what would I say here? You know, you're going to get something that's, uh, 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 oh, you carry a Microtech. Oh, 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 well, you carry a Microtech. You must have money or something. It's like, <laughs> it's like, okay, well, you can buy, you can buy a cheapo knockoff one and the screws will fall out. I've had that happen. And uh, you know, and eventually it stops working. By the time you get done, you're gonna buy just as many if you get one good knife. So you're gonna spend yeah. just as much. So right, yeah. And uh, I think you, I think you were saying uh, before we got on air that uh, Peggy also carries one. Yeah, well, yeah, she has this, She has the little, the micro UMS. One. The micro micro tech. Yeah, this yeah. one here. Oh, yeah. This one, this one doesn't get the uh, use like mine does. I mean, this one's open in boxes at work and 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 doing stuff like that. Even some things I shouldn't be doing with it. But I don't use it as a pry bar. That's one thing I don't do. Um, but um, yeah, she has one. Um, she bought this is also a 2005 model, and it's in much better shape. But still, you know, it, it, buying a decent knife like buying a nice gun because if you need to get rid of it, you can always get your money back out of it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that, that's something that's uh, that I've I've noticed. If you, if you buy them, you know, sometimes you know, depend, depending on the model, depending if you buy, you might do better. You might do yeah, better. Than sometimes, sometimes they're you know, by the time you sell them, they're worth more. Sometimes they're they're they can stay pretty close um, right. if they're in really good shape. So it's a, it's a strong secondhand buyer market. I mean, yeah. I'm sure I could sell this radial thing without it to somebody without any problem at all. That somebody'd pick it up from me, and probably not much less than what I paid for it when I got this thing. So, yeah. Uh, Simpson Road Larry says, "Buy once, cry once." <laughs> so there you go. I don't know. I don't know if it, these are in the upper echelons of like knives. If you oh, obviously, you, Corey, you go to knife shows. I mean, yeah. yeah um, I'd I, say I'd say they're up there in terms of like production knives. You know, they're mm -hmm. they're definitely. Uh, you know, I've definitely seen cheaper knives, but but again, that's sort of like you know, it's the same with with some of my guns. You know, I, I like to make sure that I I buy quality. And it doesn't mean that you know there's only one brand that does that, um, but you know I always like to to make sure that I stick with things that have kind of proven themselves to to be usable and, and take some you know hard use. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and once again, there's lots of choices you can make. Some of the stuff, even some of the other it's more the ones that lots of people like to buy. I've seen some people mention the stuff. They're not all made here either anymore either. So a lot mm -hmm. of them are, a lot of them are made in other countries. So. Um, you know, or the parts are made in other countries, and they kind of meld them all together. Yeah, but yeah. 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 The Microtechs are all made here, correct? They are. Okay. Okay. A hundred percent of the parts, everything. So, um, some of the steel that we have used, um, like M three ninety, which is a really high end steel. Um, it's actually made by a company called Bowler, which is technically it's out of Germany. Um, everything else, um, everything, uh, components, uh, pretty much everything we make actually in house, um, all in the USA. We're actually also transitioning, which kind of goes into the forms a little bit, but uh, we're transitioning to uh, some steels, um, some a couple other steels that are equivalent to like M390 and LMAX, which, you know, which we use and have used in the past um, that are American made. So uh, we've transitioned pretty much to entirely uh, American made uh, knives. So that's obviously really cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that, I was thinking more of the actual manufacturing process. I mean, oh, yeah, I mean, that's 100 percent done done yeah. here. Yeah, Harry's Holsters, our friend Harry's Holster, one of the yeah. sponsors. 
of the Hank Strange situation. Harry says, "Made in North Carolina, right?" Do you do you Absolutely. know Harry? Do you know Harry's holsters? I, I do know. I have not uh, met him, but, uh, oh, okay. but I know a couple of a couple of the guys in the in the shop actually um, use use some of the holsters. So, oh, cool. Uh, I, gotta get, I gotta, probably got to get myself one. Yeah, we can well, uh, we can, we can uh, we can get you a discount code if you use Hank Strange. <laughs> you can get ten percent off, actually. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and Harrison's right here. He's in the chat. So awesome. Um, yeah, he's a good guy. All right. So here's the thing I was going to ask before I get into other things because we were talking about this conversation, the whole thing of losing it. I know there's people out there. If you have a really good knife, you spend money on it. You uh -huh. kind of. I think I would want to carry it, but the thing that I worry about is losing it. What can we do about that, Corey? You need to solve this <laughs> right now. Uh, how can we stop? How can we stop the lost knife situation? I guess we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to make ourselves like a like a knife leash. Yeah, build a wall. <laughs> <laughs> make yourself a knife, the, almost like uh like the uh the old pocket watches. Yeah, just uh, clips right to the pants, and uh, you, you know, start goes flying out of your pocket. It's at least behind you. You might stab yourself with it, but uh, when you when you're running. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, is there anything that we can do other than tethering it? <laughs> to, to I, you know, I, I can't say that. It's the same, you know, like uh, how do we solve uh, people losing their guns, which happens more often well, than it you. It happens. It happens. Yeah, it, it does happen. <laughs> it does happen. Yeah, I mean, most of the time, surprisingly enough, the knife, it's this thing has, I mean, uh, long as, you know, usually if I wear normal, decent pants with a normal pocket, I've never had any issues. Sometimes you get these. <clears throat> These like really lightweight nylon kind of pants, and, you, and and they're slippery as hell, anyways, and it just they yeah. don't like to stay in. So yeah, I, I want to use almost every every microtech I have. I, I only have one like safe queen set that I have. So well, yeah, if you had a like a limited edition kind of special thing, then yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, if you got one that's this big, it's gonna be tough in your pocket. But you know, I mean, if right. you got one of those oversized ones, but yeah. 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 Gator bait says uh, implant a tracking device on it. <laughs> I, think that's that's I need that for my car keys. That's what I need. Mean. Fit one inside the the chassis. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't really think there is much you can do. I don't know if you can have a registry or something so that if you lose your knife and someone finds it, you may get it back. You know. I sure the, hope. I sure hope that person that found my other one appreciated that. God, that thing. Yeah. Because <laughs> a lot of people wouldn't. A lot. You know, it's, it's a lot of people don't appreciate. Well, first thing they're scared to. I've been so many people when you, you're you're doing stuff and you're working on, and I pull the knife out. And it's a tool because I can do it with one hand, and I go like this, and everybody stops. They're like, "What the? Heck? That's a that's like a switchblade." I'm like, "No, it's it's a knife. It's just a it's a tool. It's not mm -hmm. gonna bite you. It just not. It's like a gun. It's not gonna jump out and, and and get you. You know, it's like yeah. When I when I pull mine out to like cut boxes or something like that, sometimes depending on where I am. You'll, you'll get people who freak out and they're like, why, you know, why do you need a knife like that? And it's just like, it's just a knife, you know, it's uh, cool. those people. I can work, I can work with one hand. What if my other hand is doing something else? Well, for example, like a military person, what if your other arm wasn't working? Yeah. And you had to, and you had to use this to defend yourself. I mean, you know, you, at least you can open it and do something, you know, I mean, that's, that's why I see. Um, it. And let's not discredit the fact that it's just freaking cool. What's wrong with that? <laughs> that's, that's true. There's a, there's definitely a cool factor that is, that is worth, uh, worth worth a little bit. Oh, like I said, usually when I'm using it, sometimes this hand's got something I'm holding to trying to cut. So instead of dropping what I'm doing and opening the knife up, and I know you can flick them and you can there's assisted and all that, but this is way fun. Yeah. Way um, fun. So Mike Bryant has a question, and I encourage everyone out there to hit us up with the questions. I'll try to get to them. Oh, um, geez. Okay. Yeah. Are you going to um, ask that question? Yes, I'm going to ask it, but I do encourage everyone to give us real serious questions. Okay. <laughs> but Mike Bryan says, does Microtech make knives for safety harbors, firearms, skinny jeans? He needs it really slim. <laughs> now, so. now, 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 my son, who's a lot thinner than myself, um, he has one of the forward forward opening or how we, or the term. I don't put it, OTF the out the front. He's yeah, wearing his skinny jeans. See how tiny this one is? It's about yeah, the size yeah. of my finger. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's got one about that size, actually. That He actually, he was over here one day working, uh, doing something with his dog in the backyard, and I think he dropped it. And I don't know if he realized that it was going and just didn't didn't want to say, hey, I lost my microtech. But my wife found it in the backyard. And she should have held it for ransom. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Send a hostage photo. Just like whoever found Walter's microtech. 
send him an anonymous hostage photo on social media please, please treat it well don't 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 discard it and you know and, and be mean to it be nice to it so. oh someone wants to know what's the tiny one you just showed Corey. if you could throw uh, that so up that again was, uh, Dude, this is the, go, go the slower one. yeah let's get it out there yeah that was the one for the skinny jeans uh so this okay. is our utx uh, 70. um so it is 70 percent of the size of our ultra tech okay so you take an ultra tech so you can kind of see oh. how much smaller it is. Okay. It is a baby. Right. Yeah. But and for, what's the, what, go ahead, Walter. For carrying in your pocket, you know, it's it's not bad size, really. I mean, you know, it depends what you're doing. They're they're really really small, but they are surprisingly fun to carry just because of how small they are, and and they they come in handy because they're you know they're not bulky, they don't take up a lot of room, um, and just kind of little OTF that's that's the size of my finger. Uh, you know, it's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know if that's anything like this one. It it, it is. Uh, that actually okay. might be a UTX seventy as yeah. well. That uh, looks that one looks looks about the same size. Yeah, I think it is. Hold on, let me get my magnifier. Hold on a second. Let me get my. I love this. Uh, I love the magnifying ability. So yeah, Microtech UTX seventy T slash E. Where's your yeah. where's your spectacle thing, Strange? <laughs> I don't need no spectacles. <laughs> you need one of those cool those cool helmets that uh, like watchmakers and, and uh, jewelers. <laughs> yeah. He, he, he he needs needs Frank, where your Ben Franklin's at? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no Cal Gunner gave us five bucks. He says, uh, "Will Microtech bring back a OTF Cali model?" Um, yeah, we actually have. Uh, okay. We uh, we are currently um, manufacturing those, obviously in runs. Um, but we have sent um, we have sent quite a few of those actually out to Cali. Oh, okay. They can, um, have, they can have a knife in California. Come on. Yeah. Believe it or not, I think it's got to be under. It's got to be like two inches. Was it? Yeah, it's a a tight, blade. little blade. It's like one point nine inches. Um, and that that technically that makes it legal. So we uh, we make a, a UTX. Oh my gosh! Really? Showed you. We make one of these with uh, with a much shorter blade. <laughs> you're gonna have to micro stab if you're like mini me. It's for, cutting, it's for cutting the tiny boxes in your life. Yeah. Wow. Well, okay. as, a, as, a, as a girlfriend one time told me, all it takes is a half inch to gut you. So believe it or not, she said that to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, an interesting conversation you were having, Walter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. So uh, Lewis1911 wants to know where we can purchase them. Where can people buy these things? And do you guys have any kind of, um, while we're on that subject, do you have any kind of discount codes? Is there like military, law enforcement, or so, um, any kind of things you have? Yeah, so we actually have a uh, military and law enforcement program. Um, so we make, let me grab the right ones. Um, so we actually make uh, military, uh, law enforcement, and first responder specific knives that only they can actually purchase. Um, so this is our RSK. Um, it has got a red front with a black rear scale, um, and they, they all have Tonto blades. Mm -hmm. And so you can get, this is the LEO version, so it's blue, and it says it actually says LEO on it. Let's see if I can get close enough to... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see it. See it. So uh, again, and you can get them with your option of you know half serrations or non. Um, and then this is actually our military UMS knife. Um, so we actually offer these to uh, basically all military, law enforcement, and uh, first responder personnel at a uh, pretty hefty discount. So um, obviously, if uh, anybody listening falls under that category, um, you guys can actually do one of two things. You can go to our website um, under <clears throat> under our uh, military form and fill out an application and uh, upload credentials and uh, me or uh, Jason McCoy will get you taken care of. Or you can email us uh, at ccampbell at microtechknives.com and we will uh, we'll get you sorted. Okay, very cool. And a longtime listener, Hank S. I don't know who that is. <laughs> wants to know this no that's me that's me okay uh <laughs> can we get you know maybe we can arrange some kind of discount code i don't know Corey. yeah we'll, we'll have to uh for the uh, other uh, folks out there have to ask, ask the powers that be yeah no pressure no pressure all right no so pressure. now uh -huh. i just went to the website fix knives yes fix blades that big that big mofo in that in that thing back there i like those big like survival type thick full tang knives what, what do you guys got going on in that realm um so we we have made uh 
<clears throat> we've kind of discontinued um, a lot of our fixed blades. We, we still have some. Um, one of our most recent was the SOCOM Alpha, which was a, a pretty is a pretty um, awesome kind of big fixed blade. Okay. Um, but what we something new we have actually for 2019 is the SOCOM Alpha Mini, um, which we uh, I don't have one with me because we've only been putting them out of the custom shop um, for the last couple of months. But uh, the the plan hopefully is to uh, bring those into production. Um, so those will be at a much lower price point. Are those on the website? They are not currently. We're actually uh, we're actually about to launch our new website. Because I'm looking at that that really wild ass Jago Commando. Jago Commando. Yeah, that's. Uh, have you ever seen one of those, Hank? No. Let me see if oh, I can. Oh man. Yeah, basically, oh, it's, uh, it's like a Commando. giant a giant spiral rod um, that was actually, uh, from what I from what I understand, was designed for uh, for a military unit. Okay. Wow. Kind of, so that's kind of the inspiration behind uh, creating it. Austrian arms, uh, are, so for the Austrian special forces. It's a mean. It's a mean looking piece. That would definitely get the job done with one poke. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. I'm trying to pull it up here. Ooh. Oh, I like how it kind of like spirals or it's yeah. floating. Oh, well, they're they're, uh, they're oh. and, and especially in the hand. They're they're mean. They're you know they're they're made out of oh. single entire single pieces of uh, titanium, and oh, they're. Like uh, they're yeah, they're they're not something to mess with. They are they're a they're a big, big mean green yeah. machine. <laughs> That's a bad mama jama right there. Okay, big mean poking hole machine. And it looks like you can store stuff in the uh, in the hilt. You can open. Yes, it. you can. Okay. So yeah, that, that the, the the back of that particular knife unscrews, and you can you can put whatever you know whatever will fit in there. Um, okay. I've never tried okay. never tried to stick anything in there, but you know definitely if. You know, if it's something that's on like a survival-ish kind of kit, you know, matches and, you know, some stuff like that for sure will fit there. Okay, very cool. Uh, let me see. We've got a question from David Cardinal. Cardinal. He says, how strong is the lockup in the extended position? Um, let's see. Let's grab. So these have no play whatsoever once they're locked up. Um, once they're out, I'll okay. grab another one so you don't think, so you don't think it's a fluke. So um, yeah, there's nothing there. So um, obviously with uh, these particular OTFs, um, they actually have what would kind of be described as a safety feature. So um, if I, you know, just pretend I were to accidentally deploy this into an object or, you know, your leg or, you know, on accident or something like that, which it's pretty hard to do, but if you somehow manage to do it, the blade will actually come off its track so it won't fully deploy. Um, so okay. then, you know, you, you lock it back out, but it's once you lock it out, it's, it's solid. We've, um, we actually have some videos on our Instagram um, of Jason McCoy who uh, puts them through, um, like we were talking about off air, um, puts them through some, we put them through car car hoods, um, put them through steel trash cans. Uh, uh, we actually even hammered one on our, on our Instagram into a concrete and it still worked, didn't break. Okay, um, okay cool. Hammered it probably a good, you know, a good two inches into the, into the concrete and it stuck. Oh, so, really? All right. Yes, yeah, so they are. I mean, they're, they're built to, they're built to take a beating. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend hammering them into concrete, but <laughs> that won't work on the warranty thing, probably. Either. Yeah, that, that, that so would just give us ideas. <laughs> <laughs> we can torture test that for you. So, okay, very cool. Let me see. I'm trying to see if there's any other questions there, Walter. I don't know if you had. Um, the, the, I was like I said, I was on the website and I saw the fixed blade part. Yeah. So. so, why did you guys go away? Why are you guys going away from fixed blades? Um, it, it's, I don't, I wouldn't say, um, necessarily that we're, we're going away from fixed blades. Obviously we, you know, we've got some, you know, some models coming out this year, um, like the Socom Alpha Mini. Um, I just think that for sure with a lot of our OTFs, that's really kind of what sets us apart. That's what's most popular. Um, and so at least for the last little bit, we have been spending just a lot of time really focusing on, on those particular models. Um, okay. you know, we obviously do a thing, um, you know, we, we definitely will, you know, sometimes bring models back and put them back into circulation. So uh, nothing, nothing ever technically, you know, is dead. There's always, okay. always the, you know, hope. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, and I think along those lines, Harry's Holsters wants to know when are the beard combs coming back? You guys have beard combs? Yeah, yeah we do. We actually, um, so uh, I, that is, that's sort of a, um, I guess a collaboration with Jason McCoy. Um, he's uh, got this beautiful, beautiful beard that I'm trying to catch up to, but <laughs> yeah, you doing well. can't tell. It doesn't really uh, do a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, so basically it's the, uh, it's the size. Um, it's uh, the size of a UTX 85. 
like this one. Mm -hmm. um, but it has a has a metal actual beard comb. Comes with beard oil. Um, it's a pretty neat little. That's cool. Little comb. So yeah. we actually have we have been making more of those. Um, more of those just came through. Uh, okay. Came through QC, uh, I believe, the other day. So so those okay. are going out to dealers. Oh, right. Get, and what, what's the around. price on those? What's the uh, um, on the beard combs? I think they're coming in at around. Um, they're about three twenty five, if I'm not mistaken. Um, okay. Yeah, but uh, I mean, the, you know, the same thing. They're they're super solid. I don't know. I don't know who hard uses a comb, but I can promise you that's the hardest. That's the most. You know, that's yeah. the hardest. Yeah. Can you imagine some guy that? going? I will comb you to death. <laughs> don't make me comb you to death, dude. That's a that's a slow death from what I hear. <laughs> slow kind of death. Yeah, Walter. Did you have a Did you have a question or something? Uh, here? Uh, uh, combs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, actually. Uh, yeah. but uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wait, so let's wait, see. Put a blade on the back side of the comb, so you know you can do a little comb and then. Wah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. You, All right. yeah, you yeah. might want to be careful when you're going. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. You know, your downstroke or something. <laughs> yeah. You know, just a big slice of meat comes off your head. Careful what you're combing. Careful what you're combing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. No, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I actually, I'm looking at the website right now, just browsing that real quick. Okay. Um, so let's see. We got another question here. Who comes up with uh, the comb designs after? So many years in business. I guess that's if I read that correctly. Oh, comb designs? Yeah, uh, not comb design. Why am I saying that? Combs. Who comes? Who comes up with the design? Sorry. Yeah. I'm thinking um, combs. I'm thinking combs. I'm there dyslexic. Is, uh, you know, there's there's a couple people. Obviously, uh, Anthony Anthony still is very 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 active. Um, he does a lot of a lot of the designing. Um, I know with uh, his, one of his sons, uh, Sean Marfion. Um, who works at Microtech. He had he's designed a couple of knives. So the our Warhound folder, um, which currently still comes out of our custom shop, as well as just some of our Warncliffe blade designs, which are basically you know as a not knife guy, the way I would describe it is this blade just turned around, um, kind of reversed. Oh, I like the finish on. What is that? What's That's that actually a DLC. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then uh, this is actually a carbon fiber. Oh, nice chassis with uh, blue titanium hardware. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one is uh, this is actually one of my personal ones that I carry and uh, beat the you know beat the crap out of and the DLC is actually awesome. It uh it takes a lot to show wear on that. I've I've done some some pretty crazy cutting with it. Um, that does not it still looks brand new. So which again goes back to the guys who want to carry you know carry their nice knives. That uh DLC is a, is a good way to go. Okay, very mm -hmm. cool. Let me get this one question in. Master Sergeant Poppy USAF says. Does the uh, military thing include retirees? Um, yeah, if you, if you want to uh, if you want to shoot me an email, um, I can definitely make that happen. Yeah. So uh, you want to give us that email again? Yeah. So it is uh, C Campbell and Campbell. I didn't even tell you at first because like the soup. So C A M P B E L L at microtechknives.com. Okay. Um, and David Cardinal wants to know if you offer sharpening on the Jag Jacomodo, <laughs> Jacko Commando, um, Jacko Commando. From what I understand, not typically, only because it's not. It was not designed as a cutting knife. Um, it was designed strictly as a stabbing kind of tool. Um, so even though the 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 edges are, you know, I'd, I'd consider them sharp. They're not like razor sharp. Um, so typically, we I've not I've not seen any of those personally that have ever been sharpened. Okay. All right. There you go. So let's see here. Um, okay. If the, I don't know if there's any other, uh, any other questions that we can get into here. What knives did you, what knives do you have to show us? I, I'm guessing you have some new things that are coming out. I do. I've got, um, I've got a bunch of our new stuff that's like just released this week, um, yes. this week and last week. So okay. uh, these are some of our, some of our folders. Um, this is our SOCOM elite. Um, we've got a couple different colors in these. So the tan and the OD green that we have, um, they both just came out the last couple weeks. Um, and we have make these in both a manual as well as uh, this automatic right here. So it's got the little button. Um, and so these are, I mean, these are kind of the staple, in my opinion, the staple for our folding knives. Um, they're 
I've got I've got a couple, and they're sort of the knife that I would want to have if I you know don't want anything to go wrong, and I want to I want to hard use it. Um, same thing, black. These right here got the awesome little satin. I don't know if you pick it up, but the satin finish on that's mm -hmm. gorgeous. Um, yeah. And the actions on these are they are so so smooth. Yeah. Um, so that that's awesome. Um, then, like I said, so. Something that we have uh, we have been producing is also the cipher. Um, so you might you know not going to drop any names, but you might be seeing a cipher s knife in upcoming movies. Oh, okay. Um, okay. But uh, it's got some uh, John Wick kind of, three. Yeah. <laughs> got some. Uh, it's kind of. I said that. I said that. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hank said that. Um, yeah, so I like that all around serrated. It's like a chainsaw. Oh yeah, these are. I'll be honest. When I when I first started, um, I'm a huge fan of just the the smooth, you know, kind of standard um, blades without any serrations. Um, and a lot of the guys made fun of me because they all have serrations. And I've kind of grown to like them because of just how absolutely insanely sharp they are. Um, they make short work out of basically everything, including um, including your fingers. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I daily probably put band-aids on because I'm you know, <laughs> playing knives for a living now. And uh, sometimes it get a little, you know, get a little crazy. But uh, obviously, um, I saw Lola. Uh, um, I, don't, I think it was on her Instagram. Um, she posted the, the new zombie tech. And I actually was able to get, Ooh, uh, yeah. get one of these. So these actually were one of the first kind of um, themed knives that we made. And they were just absolute stellar Kind of sellers, so we have. Yeah, I like to, that zombie green. Yeah, someone yeah. actually, uh, uh, Brian Wyatt was just asking anything in zombie green. I like how that's got the blood splatter on it. Yeah, it's actually it's it's awesome. It uh, it's a cool. It's, this is definitely your your October carry mm. for Halloween. Yeah, and then or it has a nice little blood vein in it, or whatever you call that. Uh, yeah, blood blood groove, a fuller. I've, yeah. I've kind of heard I've heard a couple of things, but uh, so this is obviously new. These just came out. Um kind of through the facility, you know, today and yesterday. So these are, these are hitting dealers, obviously very, very, very soon. Yeah. Um, I call dibs. I call dibs. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one you want, right? If you're gonna go on. Um, then uh, this yeah, is actually, that way I know like zombie green, <laughs> zombie green. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, you know, I showed you the, uh, the combat Trodon. Um, we actually make That's just cool. a standard Trodon, which is in, in that really nice blue, mm -hmm. um, which is sort of like a mini version of that. Um, and these are, also kind of one of my favorites it's a uh, it's smaller uh, fits in the pocket really well and um, i like the design of this a lot it's definitely my probably one of my favorite knives we make okay very cool yeah i mean i, mean, I think i don't know where you're at with this walter i kind of uh, i do like i've always liked serrations right mm -hmm. but my friends that are knife friends they always tell me no no serrations you um, can't you can't sharpen that yourself i i like i like to have i like to have blade on one side serrations on the back Okay. Uh, why? Yeah, I mean, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, Walter. yeah, why is that, Walter? Well, I mean, because sometimes, well, I don't know. I mean, it's hard. The serrations, like I said, really, really sharp. If they're sharp, they're, they do business really quick. Sometimes, <laughs> like you said, you accidentally, you, but, and, and, and to get cut, your, 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 your paws with serrations is a nasty cut, too. It's mm -hmm. not a, all cuts are nasty, but serration cuts are really a, they seem to be a little more, a lot more aggressive in their nature. So, uh, um, but you know, I don't, I guess there's some, there's sometimes, I guess you can use the serrated edge and then sometimes you need a flat edge. I... Yeah. Uh, Michael Willis says serrations are the way to go. <laughs> uh, there you go. Yeah. Um, What's up, Willis. Yeah. Um, and then let's see, Rob D New York outcast says, wish the ones that can afford this stuff would spend it in the fight for our rights and said, I respect that much more. Um, okay. I, you know, I, I, I understand where you're coming from there. I think that, um, I, I, you know, I don't fully see the correlation there with that. I think people should have, should support the second amendment, get out there and fight for the second amendment. At the same time, you know, human beings have to do something. <laughs> you know, you you have to do something, have things, or whatever. So. Everybody has their um their uh, let's see, what do we want to say? You know, some people like to have the the newest cell phone. Some people gotta have the shiny wheels on their car. Yeah. Um, if yeah, people have, people have to have their vices, but I think also yeah, yeah, tools, yeah. 
I'm not against spending um, like good money on tools if it's worth it. I think that's what we need oh. to realize. I think we, people look at that the same way they do with guns and lots of other things. And then let's be honest, like that knife that you carry, like an EDC, if we, if we were talking about EDC, you know, you carry your gun, you carry your light, you know, you should always have a knife on you. Oh, you know, you're going to so, just so everybody knows, I found my O light. Oh, congratulations to you, Walter. <laughs> the you one, found that, it. Gave, the one that you gave me that went missing? Yes. Where was it, Walter? It was in the Suburban. Oh, okay. It fell and, in a seat. And the guy that, the person who does my, uh, cleans my car on it, uh, he got all finished and I go to move it and I look down the center and there's the light sitting. So, I have found many a lost thing in the car. Yeah. <laughs> many yeah. a lost thing. I have a feeling that it fell out of my pocket. As a matter of fact, so um, yeah, which this doesn't do that in the suburban, but the the freaking O light pops right out. So yeah, I mean, listen, I'm not trying to, <clears throat> I'm not trying to glance over. Uh, well, it all depends on what you can swing. If you can't swing it, you can't swing it. Well, yeah, this is what I was saying to Rob because he says, "I wish you would, Hank. Rights are more important than stuff." Totally agree with that. I, I think I, I, I totally agree with that. If you're, if you, and also if you're the kind of person that loses a knife every other week, then you definitely don't want to be losing. Your microtech, okay. Um, you you well, want to get something that's expendable. It's a, you know, so. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's, okay, so I'm trying to address what Rob is saying here. Yeah. You know, I think that the rights are very important. We want to fight for the rights. Even we had that discussion here, even with knives, for example. So, for example, if people, when they get rid of guns, they're going to come after knives. In lots of cases, they're going for these things at the same time. So I, I agree with you on that. What, what I'm trying to say is, uh, for example, here on the show, we spend a lot of time and a lot of money fighting for Second Amendment rights. That's why I do this like Monday to Friday, yeah. five times a week. Um, you know, I'm here. Actually, it's incredibly expensive to do this, to rent the space, pay for the Internet, electricity, all the overhead that goes into it. I could buy a lot of knives and, and <laughs> lots of other cool stuff. Yeah. I do it. Walter shows up here a lot. He runs a business. Yeah, spends time doing it. Um, same thing with Corey. We're not like you know Corey and and um, Microtech coming on here. There's lots of companies out there that do fight for the rights. People buy stuff from them and then they fight for it. I would agree that there's companies who maybe don't care, don't fight for it. They're not concerned with these kinds of things. Um, I, I think at the same time, human beings have things. What we're trying to do here is we have an opportunity to talk to Microtech. You know, why not yeah, well, well, like I said, some find out about some stuff? Everybody doesn't see certain, you know, like I said, some people look at knives and they go, oh, okay, knife. I can do that with that $5 knife. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Well, you, know, you know, on the other they hand, they might have, they might have on a $500 pair of shoes. So you know, just, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, obviously rights are definitely more important than stuff, but at the same time, um, you know, I get, you know, my, you know, purchasing of guns and, and knives and certain things, you know, that's at the same time, that's me exercising, you know, yeah. my rights. And, you know, if we don't have people doing that, then, that's where, you know, that's where you get into trouble. Yeah. You know, you don't, you don't have to spend the money on it if you don't want to. And that's what's nice about it. If you, yeah. if you have choices, you have choices. That's the best and, you it, and you know what, like, like that guns and like everything else, there's, there's people making them, there's people selling the material to make them. There's, there's, you know, all the people that trickle down, you know? And so, yeah, it is. You know, keeps yeah. people working, keeps people busy, man. That's what, that's what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, listen. First of all, I think there's something to be said for we get a little preachy or whatever, you know. But what we're trying to do here is showcase people. We have an opportunity to to showcase something, and so that's what we're up to here. I understand, you know, there may be, I don't know, whatever grumblings about it out there. I think we we spend a lot of time doing that. I think there are companies that do it. There's companies that don't do it. So, but, you know, we're, we're living in a capitalist society. You know, we need, we need money to, to fight for these things, you know, so, and there has to be this exchange. People have to buy these things. We have to put it out there. People have to realize, oh, wait, this thing is cool. How come I can't have it? where I live. Oh, you can't have it because of this. All of these things need to happen. Um, you know, so that's what we're up to. Like, I, I, I don't know if there's uh, folks out there that would like to have like a particular Second Amendment conversation, which we could totally do if you want to do it. 
But we we do believe in the Second Amendment. We're trying to we're trying to fight for that all the time. We're trying to wake up people out there and and get them aware of what's going on. So, um, you know, so okay, Rob's saying that I'm not trying to start crap, but to an average worker like me, price matters. Well, yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, I understand yeah, that. Sure. Yeah, Absolutely, yeah. I mean, yeah. I I. No I don't I, I'm not going to argue that at all. But look, so when it comes to things and people buying things, I think there's people that have like unlimited amounts of money and they could buy anything. But for most of us, most of us who live in the middle, there's certain things. And what I'm saying, like, you know, like average types of people, there's certain things that we would spend good money on if that thing is of good quality. Right. And there's certain other things we don't care about. And that goes for all things. So let's say like if we talk about cars, for example. There's people that don't give a crap about a car. Nope. So all they care about is, hey, can I get in this car and drive from one place to the other? I don't care what color it is, how many horsepower it has, what it looks like. And then there's people on the other side of the scale that they really, really like cars and they care about those kinds of things. And right. then they would spend their money on that, but not other things necessarily. So, yeah. you know, I think that's the the uh, <laughs> that's the the uh, position that we're in. I see Richard Hughes is saying Audi R8 driving right in the middle, but that's exactly what I'm talking about. If you actually know me, I'm the kind of person I care so much. The things I care about, I spend a lot of money on. Guns, oh, yeah. cars, Guns. stuff like that. Yeah, clothes, I don't buy too often. You know, I, I don't buy like shoes too often. There's a whole bunch of other things I don't do. And then I put my money into the things that I like because that gives me enjoyment, those particular things. <laughs> I don't spend a lot of money on crack. You know, don't spend a lot of money on that. Don't uh, spend a lot of money on uh, cocaine <laughs> hookers yeah. and all those other things out there that people could do low on, low on the list. Yeah. And they could spend their money on. But the things that I really enjoy, I believe, hey, get out there and spend your money on it. And I think all people are like that, regardless of where they're at uh, with income and stuff like that. So I'm not I'm not trying to I'm not trying to come down on anyone and I'm not trying to like live above anyone either. I think I've seen all different kinds of life. But if you're a human being and you like things, you'll you'll spend money on those things. And I think as you get older, you start to find out that those things that you spend a little bit more money on, regardless of what it is, if it's clothing, you know, if it's knives, if it's guns and things like that, you you're doing it because you realize, hey, this thing has a better quality when I spend money on it versus the cheap things. I think that goes for guns. I think that goes for knives as well. I mean, you know, we all have kind of, you know, passions. So, you know, sometimes it's knives, sometimes it's guns. I mean, obviously I'm, I'm a huge, you know, gun person. And, mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, that's where, uh, that's what I enjoy. That's what gives me kind of a lot of enjoyment. I look forward to doing some of that stuff. So that's where a lot of my money goes. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, some people that's knives, you know, like you said, some people that's cars. Um, so yeah. you know, we all have our kind of different things that we, we kind of, yeah. And, and at the same time, like I'll, I'll say it again, I'm not, you know, um, I, I'm not trying I'm not trying to defend anything, but I think we were talking about this earlier. There's ways if you think these things are good quality, there's different ways of getting into it. I could tell you, like the 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 knives that I have here, they belong to Patrick. Um, Patrick is a perfect example of what yeah. I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he believes in saving money. <laughs> you know, but he will hunt down a deal. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hunt down a deal. You know, that's the, the guy that gets hand guards from Russia for his AK. So uh. yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, but you know, that's the that's the thing about. As a matter of fact, like for example, with these knives, I know Patrick was talking to me about this today. He found someone that's willing to barter for a microtech, and he's like, Hank, you know. Do you hey. have this guy's willing to barter? You know, if you've got some stuff that you don't need, some gun parts and things like that, you know, this guy's open to barter. You can get that's yeah, what I'm trying to say to you. If you want to do this, um, I think and I'm not speaking directly to Rob or anything like that. I'm talking to anyone out there. Yeah, yeah. If there's something you and want that, in life and you think it's not attainable, you can do it. There's well, that, that, goes, that goes for guns. That goes for cars. That goes for there's people who get build stuff and cars and just from swapping and trading and <laughs> You know, yeah. I mean, you can. It, there's people that built do amazing things by just trading and swapping and and and, and finding stuff and yeah. And, uh, and I, not everybody's good at that either, but you know, that's one way to go about it. Yeah, sure. but if you really think that something is cool and you want to get your hands on it, 
I think that you know there are ways that you can you can do that. What what do you think about this, Corey? I don't know. No, I mean, yeah, there, like I said, the the secondhand market. Um, you know, I see it a lot on you know on the Facebook forums are huge. I'm sure there are other places that do it. That's kind of some of the stuff I monitor with my job. But mm -hmm. um, and I'm super super active on the the Facebook forums. So obviously, you know, people can always always find me and uh, <clears throat> you know have questions. You can always reach out. But um, I you know I see it all the time. People will trade almost anything for a microtech. <laughs> They'll trade a microtech for almost anything, you know, vice versa. Um, so there, I mean, there, there's a ton of ways, you know, obviously on the mill gov side, if you're, you know, if you're in, following any of those positions, that's, that's one way to get into it a little bit cheaper. Um, but you know, there, there's a lot of ways, you know, you can definitely get creative with, uh, with getting some of these. What good, what are good forums out there for people to go to? Um, the ones that I know, obviously, uh, on Facebook, um, they're actually, there's a, there's a couple that's microtech buy, sell trade. Um, and there's a couple of sub sub microtech groups under that, that kind of have similar names. Um, that, you know, they've, they've got, you know, tens of thousands of, you know, members in them. And it's mm -hmm. just literally day in and day out, seven days a week. They're, they're, uh, you know, asking questions to that, to that community. They're, um, they're trying to trade, they're trying to trade knives, you know, buy and sell. Um, it's, it's an incredibly active place. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for something that would be, if, if you're looking for something, uh, you know, and you're in that market where you're trying to buy used then definitely that's that's a good place to look all right so speaking of all that good stuff <clears throat> the phone's going off here and the reason the phone's going off is because somebody's offering me a, a micro deck for trade okay so, very uh, cool walter which can we do i mean i don't want you to give away your sources but what <laughs> micro tech are we talking about here <laughs> well i mean we get the picture of it up here again okay here. yeah um, I'm, on speakerphone. I'm a negotiator yeah yeah, yeah. This, okay here we go hold on let me lock it in and how do you tell if if it's real? Yeah, what's the? I know there's a part of the web page <laughs> that talks about that, but yeah, there. I mean, there's a, there's a couple of different things you would look at them, and it and it kind of varies between models. Um, but obviously, you know, there there's kind of the the images on like so that looks like a UTX seventy. So like the you know the well, images a long, a long handle and looks like a long handle and a short blade. Is that is yeah. that? So the uh, like the it's right here. So the images um, on the the chassis, you know, they're you know you can tell sometimes if they're fake if they're not really clear if they're not centered. Mm. Um, you know, sometimes the screws, you know, it, it can, get, can get pretty deep, but sometimes the screws that we use don't match up with the year of the knife. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Ob you know, obviously, there, there's little telltales. You know, obviously on the uh, the halo that I had out right here, thing shoots out like crazy. Um, on the actual um charging handle um there's actually specific you know specific spacing oh. for you know so oh, so what's going on here with this thing this thing unfolded from both well, yeah so this is this is actually what would be uh you know obviously the you know like the the other knives the other otfs that we've shown are not technically considered switch blades um this is one that would be because it has a single button um if i were to deploy this into something sort of in that same conversation we had earlier um, this one is not stopping. Let's put it that oh, way. Oh, oh, I want that one. Yeah, oh, this okay. is, uh, this is, uh, these are, these are obviously super popular. Um, so these are single action. So there, you know, there's no, oh, um, obviously there's no play in them whatsoever. Um, but to recharge them, you hold the button down and you actually have to recharge the handle. Ooh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so interesting. These are, uh, these are some, some pretty epic. Yeah. This, is, this is a serious knife that right is, here. That has a ballistic feel to it. Um, <laughs> yeah, thankfully, I mean, obviously, thankfully, the uh, the blade doesn't accidentally shoot out on you. Yeah. yeah. It stays in place. Yeah. So here's the, here's the thing. Like, uh, Rob says he, he doesn't have any hard feelings or anything like that, yeah. which I understand. I'm trying to get people to understand what we're doing here. We talk a lot about the Second Amendment, but basically, this is a platform where I take my time. Lots of other people take their time. Um, I don't I don't pay anyone to come on here, and no one pays us to come on here. I definitely don't pay Walter. <laughs> you know, although Walter does support it, like Walter actually puts money yeah. into this place to keep it running. So everyone knows that. But, you know, Corey's taking two hours out of his day to ex to um, give us some insight into these knives. I think it's very valuable. And then we get to leave this two hours up on the Internet for folks who are interested in this to come along later and have reference things or get ideas of what's going on here, as well as I'm learning, uh, you know, I'm learning about something. So that's why I'm trying to explain it to you guys and just say that, 
you know, I'm aware of the fact that some people have like uh, price point uh, entry issues with this. And that's why we're trying to talk yeah. you know, on that subject. Like, how do you get into it? If you've well, got you those know, one issues? thing too, it, it, even if uh, this is kind of, even if you can't afford something, it doesn't mean you can't want to have want it still. I mean, have a, have a, have a goal, have a something, you know, have a, have a, you know, you, you, you don't want to just be satisfied with a, a, that plastic Chinese knife. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> I want the microtech. What do we got to do to get the microtech? What do I got to do? You know? So, yeah. And I think, I think it's like, you know, it's like cars too. You know, who settles for, you know, Hey, you got, you got, you got this R8 thing. Well, there's, there's other ones you could probably like a, a Bugatti? You want to take a Bugatti for your trade? Your <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. Yeah. There's always, something bigger. There's always something bigger and better, you know. I mean, come on. Here's what I think. Here's what I think about a lot of things. Like, you know, um, like, for example, my car is incredibly expensive. Um, and the person who pays for that is Lola. So <laughs> just so that have, you know. You yeah, still have the Challenger? No, I don't. Ah. Oh. No. No, I have a I have an Audi R8, but it's it's obviously like a source of contention for some people. All of anything that I make from what I from what I do um, on wow. on the social media side of of this thing, all of that goes back into it. Um, and Lola, you know, obviously that's my wife. We've been married for like twenty something years, and all that kind of stuff. She likes to see me have nice things. And one of the things that she knows is I like cars, and I spend a lot of money flipping through, going through different cars, you know. And I think the whole the whole issue there is I came to the realization that you can go through all of these cars because you're not really finding what you're looking for. But if you find something that's worth it, it may be it may be difficult, it may be very expensive for you, but you 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 feel that sense of enjoyment of it, and I and I totally appreciate it with that. I know everyone can't do that. But at the same time, hey, I put a lot of my time, energy, uh, time away from my family, money, and all that kind of stuff back into what I do here. So, you know, uh, Harry's holster says he's ready to see me in a Phantom. So, you know, and then Rob D, New York Outcast, says, "Does Lola have a sister?" What you don't realize, Rob, I think it's the same thing that I'm trying to say here. I met Lola when she was in college. And I was working. So when she went through college, <laughs> I actually worked and paid all the bills and supported her. So that's how that thing kind of works. <laughs> Even now. Yeah. Even now. Yeah. That's a pretty deep investment that we make in each other that goes back and forward. And that's the thing that I'm trying to that I'm trying to say to people about all of this. So you know, okay. All right. Now let's go back to some knives. <laughs> Should I get it? Should I get it? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So, so what does that person want for that knife? I don't know yet. We haven't we haven't talked about. Oh, it. you guys negotiate. Uh, is that someone that's watching the show, or that's just that's coming? It's actually up? a friend of um, my machinist, Chris. Oh, okay, cool. What we what did you want to say, Corey? I know I cut you oh, off. Yeah, no, I was gonna say. You know, you were talking about. Uh, so obviously, um, at least you know when I've gone to knife shows and things like that, um, there has definitely been some confusion with. Uh, I'm not sure if um, Walter's heard it, but obviously Microtech and then Micro, uh, Marfion Customs. So okay. uh, Marfion Customs is actually, a, I, guess, I guess that we would call it a subdivision of Microtech and it's actually our custom shop. Um, so even though we do have the production side of everything, we do um, on the other end have the, you know, the elite, the extremely cra you know, crafted, the, the very high end kind of knives. Um, right. So I, did, I was able to bring a couple of those. Um, oh, sweet, okay. Yeah, so this, this is actually, uh, a UTX 70. Um, I like those blue, bolts on there. <laughs> oh yeah, so blue titanium hardware, and this one has a mirror polished. <laughs> Holy crap! Spartan blade. So you see, it's uh, so we we call that the Spartan blade. It kind of comes to a point like an arrowhead. Um, mm -hmm. you can, I mean, you can see, you can almost see yourself. Wow! Uh, yeah, I can. I can see that. my reflection. Yeah, <laughs> I can. I can. <laughs> yeah. So these are uh, these are obviously super popular. We just had a, a big run of these come through. So uh, these are. You know, some of these are going to be hitting dealers. Um, another special one that I brought is actually a uh, a cipher, so smooth body um, cipher with copper, sort of see copper ringed hardware. Uh, this one is one of my favorites. So this also has a mirror polished blade. Wow, that's um, yeah. So I have, I mean, honestly, I've seen a lot of mirror polishing, and this has been some of the kind of just most flawless. Uh, mirror polishing I've ever seen it. It really adds a pretty significant touch. I mean, you can see this is a sleek, yeah. a sleek little knife. Um, the actions on these are insanely smooth. You've got the you know the copper accents on the the button. 
Um, so, you know, no detail, no detail at all is left left on, you know, untouched. So these, so these are from the custom side of the business, yeah. right? So, yes, what uh, you know, I hate to get into this yeah. one more time, but what are we looking at price-wise with um, this on the custom so, side? Um, so we'll, we'll go from, from least expensive to, to most expensive. So something like this little Spartan, it's going to run you around $800. Okay. Um, obviously, you know, there's definitely a lot of extra work that goes into these in terms of the polishing, you know, at, you know, hours and hours and, mm -hmm. um, the, the different grinding patterns on these, the, uh, cipher, this particular cipher is going to, going to run you about $1,500. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously the prices on these will vary a little bit just depending on like the, the, the blade finish, the, the actual, um, the hardware and, you know, in the, uh, the knives themselves, you know, some, some materials are more expensive than others. Um, and this is actually, so this is a really special one. Um, so this is what our customs come in. If you ever buy a Marfion custom, okay. so really, really high end, um, nice box custom cases. Um, and this, so when you open it up, Walter, I, I hope you're taking notes here. Cause this is what I they want come with, uh, the <laughs> microfiber, the microfiber cloths uh -huh. and they actually will come in, they will come in this pouch, a pouch right here. Now, before I show you that all of our customs that actually come out of the custom shop come with, um, metal, um, certificates of authenticity. So there is that, um, wow. and so, so it even is. if you get the hundred dollar, the eight hundred dollar one, excuse me, you're yeah, still getting comes, all this. Okay. Yep, you're still getting all this. So comes in this really cool pouch. It actually has a little dagger, a little dagger that can come out. Um, it's metal okay. uh, velcro in there, okay. um, and it's in its own little pouch. Now uh, this is a custom Ultratech that has wow a stainless body and abalone um, inlays in the blade or in the uh, chassis. Okay. And nice. actually that little <laughs> button right there is a, it's like a butterfly Damascus. Wow. Okay. And so this one you'll also see has, jeez, <laughs> is uh, inlaid. The blade is also inlaid with abalone. So, um, these are some of the more high end, um, knives. This particular one um, is going to go for about three to $4,000. Okay. Um, yeah, and that's so. and that's the high end for you guys. And I'll, and I'll tell you guys this. I have this conversation all the time because I'm talking to lots of different people like gun guys, knife guys, and all that. Um, I have a friend of mine that works um, for Cabot Guns, for example. Yeah. He does. He's a, he's a competitive shooter for Cabot Guns. So Cabot makes 1911s. And I think their like their entry level guns used to be five, six, seven thousand dollars. I think now they're doing some like thirty five hundred dollar uh uh, 1911s, and then they have like a shot show. You'll see a two and a half million dollar set that came from Moon they Dust. Had, they had uh, that four that four that four and a half million dollar set that was the meteorite. Yeah, the entire yeah. gun was made out of meteorite. As, as epic. Yeah, so I was talking to my friend about all of this of people talking about the prices, and he was like, "Listen, I'm a competitive shooter. I have 22 rifles that cost ten thousand dollars." You know, so there's always a scale. And I think it's the same thing with knives. I've spoken to knife people and I've been looking at some really nice knives and I'm like, how much does this knife cost? You know, and he's like, yeah, man, I, you know, I could hook you up. I got a really good deal on it. I get that for you for like seven grand. That's a dollar. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I run, um, in you know. I run exclusively like all Terran, um, Terran tactical stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, you know, my Terran rifle, the way it's set up, my Terran rifle is almost $5,000. So, um, yeah. Yeah, you know, it, it definitely you know to get the the right stuff. So you know, sometimes if you wanna if you wanna play in some of those some of those you know sandboxes, um, yeah. unfortunately, sometimes you have to spend the money on yeah. it. To, to There's scales off. of these things, and when you look at like something that's a couple of hundred, and then it's not to say that those things aren't worth it, but maybe these are the kind of things that you know your wife gets you on an anniversary or birthday or you well, know yeah, things well, like that. that. You got to remember something. Some people five thousand dollars is is chump change yeah yeah and it yeah. may not be for me or you or whoever but five grand it's like sure you know i got it I'm, I'm making a million and a half a week so what's five grand yeah it uh, depends on who you're talking to i remember that whole 1911 thing i was telling that um story i was uh where was i okay steven seagal i went to this barbecue one time in arizona <laughs> and steven seagal was there and there was a 1911 guy that i was talking to and and I didn't realize it, but this guy actually makes 19, custom 1911s, and uh, Steven Seagal buys 1911s from him. And I was talking to him about Cabot guns, and he was like, "Oh, those are cheap." 
<laughs> I was like, what do, you, what, what do you mean they're cheap, dude? What are you saying? He's like, listen, if you want a 1911 from me, first of all, forget about how much money you have. I have to like you for you to even get one of these things. Yeah, I was like, oh, I was like, okay. And he was like, yeah, and my entry 1911s cost like 45 grand. <laughs> yeah, you know, a lot of... Uh... <laughs> A lot of people think, uh, and it doesn't take anything away from them because they're absolutely, you know, they're fantastic. But like, you know, Nighthawk and Wilson, a lot mm -hmm. of people kind of consider those custom 1911s, and they're not. You know, they're right. they fall more in the, the semi custom. You know, I, I remember, I don't even think they're still in business, but like Vocal Precision, and um, you know, some of those guys, you know, they're they're pure custom 1911s. You know, they start at you know eight, nine, ten thousand dollars. Yeah. and just kind of go up from the, you know, that's like getting the, the basic, basic model. You know, you actually want to kind of blink it up and, and you get, it gets a little crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, when you go to the shot show, go over to the Parazzi uh, shotgun. Boom. Yeah. Oh, Thanks. those, those are the Italian. Um, yeah. Taking a look at Parazzi's bespoke, bespoke shotgun. And, and they know, had, they had a, a lot of them are, a lot of them are more than most people's houses. So, yeah. you know, they had a, a like a ridiculous booth last year. <laughs> they always yeah. have ridiculous. Yeah. I always just walk by because you know in Shot Show that they always have like the really beautiful girls playing violins or something uh -huh. like that going on over there. And I just walk by. I don't even like you know. I, I you know you have to be careful. You don't want to smell the same air <laughs> as the million dollar shotguns. <laughs> you might get arrested or something like that. I'll charge you for it. Yeah, I think the most expensive guns I ever held is I went to Standard Manufacturing in Connecticut um, and they make bespoke they make bespoke guns like heirloom guns yeah. and they had these uh two shotguns that I think belonged to the queen or something like that Lola remember like Queen Elizabeth or whatever and these two shotguns were about 5 million dollars. Yeah, I don't care. I don't yeah. well yeah, they don't make it just cuz the queen touched it don't make it worth 5 million dollars, sorry. Yeah, no, it's not because of that. It's not because of that. It's because of when how old that gun is and all the work that went into it the wood the the scroll work that's on the gun and all that kind of stuff how long it's it's been out there some of those some of those guns are so expensive that when the people who own them die the family members are afraid to even keep them because they don't know how to maintain them and stuff like that you know and and that's what they were telling me so there's always scales i under, like that's what i'm trying to say there's there's scales of this stuff so um i get it, I get it. Yeah. So let's see. Someone was someone was asking if you guys have a show. I think it's Jafari H says, does Microtech have a show uh, a showroom somewhere? Um, no. Uh, I mean, you know, we, we are uh, we you know, we've got some different you know facilities um, that hopefully maybe one day might turn into sort of, you know, showrooms. Mm -hmm. um, but at the moment, we don't have anything. Uh, okay. anything set in place for people to come visit. But uh, like I said, there's there's definitely talks of, uh, of doing something like that. Okay. Um, just, you know, people can come and visit and, and kind of, you know, get the sort of the, the history tour um, mm -hmm. and just kind of see a lot of the the kind of epic things that, you know, we've made over the years. You know, there's sort of like similar to, to that, you know, Abalone Ultratech. Um, I've seen, I mean, I've seen some, some of the knives we've made that they're so nice. I don't even want to hold them, you know, they're, uh, so, I mean, and, and I, I say that just, you know, the, the history of, you know, kind of where they've gone and where they're going. Um, it, you know, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting and, uh, it, you know, it definitely would be cool to kind of be able to see all that in one place. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm sure that'll, that'll come along. What's the yeah. biggest show that you guys do? Is it blade, blade, the blade show? Or? I, I would probably, I would probably say blade shows are, that's our, our biggest, um, yeah. definitely our biggest show. Obviously this, this year they did the blade show West in, uh, Oregon, um, Portland, okay. um, okay. Book that we, uh, that we did. It was, I think it was the first year in in a while that they've had it and we, we were there. And, um, so that was obviously fun, but, but Atlanta is a, it's a different animal. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, we, we need to do that one time. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's awesome. It's yeah. sort of like a knife shot show kind of. Yeah. yeah. Well, Walter, me and you will go to the blade show. I'll I've give heard, you a I kind of heard a little bit. I follow somebody else on the internet. Um, Alec, Alex Steele. He's an mm -hmm. English guy that just moved over here that does, um, blacksmithing and metalworking. And he's, very young, young guy, but um, he's like uh, got a huge following on the internet. Is that the guy that was in one of those sh those shows? Like, uh, no, he's Forged? he's never been in Forged and Fire or anything. Oh, okay, um, but yeah, Alex Steele. Um, but anyways, he had, he was he went to the blade to that blade show, and um, 
and he was talking, I guess there's a section where it's all modern manufacturing stuff. And then the other section is like blacksmithing, old school mm -hmm. kind of knife making. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd like to see it. That'd be cool. Yeah. Corey can tell us about it. By the way, before you tell us about that, Corey, Mike Bryant says you can use his house as the museum if you want. We'll do it. We'll set it up. Yeah. You will never get anything back. <laughs> You know, he'll have he'll have a writer in there once it crosses the threshold of my house. <laughs> it's now mine. Yeah. So uh, you've been to the Blade Show. How, how is it? Give us a little primer on the Blade Show. Also, well, so um, we're talking about the the Big Blade Show. Yeah. Yes. This is so, the one in Atlanta, right? Yeah. Big Blade Show is crazy. Um. So this past year was my first year. Um. I was not actually technically affiliated with Microtech when I went. Um, obviously went, you know, specifically for Microtech. I went to visit and, uh, and, you know, and meet, meet, to uh, Tony for the first time and kind of meet the entire crew. Um, and I can tell you, um, you know, our, our booth was huge. Um, and there, it still wasn't enough room. Like, and I, and I say that because it's just, there are so many people that come to the show and, uh, you know, we, we had, we had a, um, a blade show special, basically, you know, some of the shows we, we go to. We'll make um, you know special kind of versions of some some of our knives that are you know blade show specials and they'll you know be 125 150 dollars. Um, so yeah, for those guys that are looking for those knives at the lower price points, that's the that's the ticket. Okay, um, there you go. Okay, and uh, you know we had a, a three hour wait uh, for for that particular knife, um, and I, I believe they were sold out within a couple hours. You know, wow. first day. So, uh, I mean, it, it, it's a madhouse. It's crazy. It literally, you know, in my opinion, it's basically the knife, the knife shot show. Um, it's yeah. kind of, you know, it, it's definitely not as big. I mean, shot show, you know, you know, is just, it's epic. It's just crazy. It's on another level size wise, but, um, but blade show is, is, a it is a definitely a fun place to go to. And, and you see some absolutely incredible things. You see some, uh, some genuinely just absolutely gorgeous, you know, craftsmanship, uh, you know, there's swords, you know, if you're into all that kind of stuff, um, you know, swords, there's kind of the entire, entire spectrum of, of bladed weapons. Okay. Very cool. Um, Archangel wants to know, would Microtech be willing to franchise out for a storefront? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know that one. I don't, unfortunately I don't get to, to make that decision. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Way above the pay grade. And Razor JB says blade show is far better than shot. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, yeah. It all depends on your interest, I guess. You know. Yeah. Oh well, Razor JB is into guns. He's in. He's a gun guy. He's a gun. Well, guy. I mean, I guess it de it depends on probably why he's saying that. Um, yeah. I he know, probably doesn't like Vegas. I was about to say, you know, Vegas. Vegas is a little rough. Um, you know, nobody. I don't think anybody feels good leaving Vegas. Um, <laughs> everybody, everybody's exhausted. Uh, and, you know, I know there was. Some, you know, there's been some criticism of Shot Show in the past with, uh, you know, just you know. The overcrowding and things like that. So I know that there's a lot of people that were turned off to you know shot show by that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, Walter, were you gonna add something? Ask something there. Hey, did you like that knife that I, the the microtech that I showed you the picture? Of? Did you get it? Well, I mean, I'm asking Hank. Did you did you did you want to? Did become, I like it? Do you want to become uh, a microtech owner? Well, uh, yeah. Uh, is this is this is this a potential gift for the hangster? Well, there's a deal yeah. we might have to that we can. Work. Oh, a deal. We're talking a deal. Yeah, yeah I do. Yes. I do. Uh, wait, sh that's the one. The same one that Corey was showing, right? I forgot the color. Was it blue? It was similar. It was, uh, the color on that one was, I think, green. I think it was like a was, uh, green kind of. Yeah. yeah okay. uh, this, little, this little guy. Okay. Yeah, there's there might be a deal in the works for you. Can okay. See. What's the value of that knife, Corey? Um, this particular one is actually in our signature series. Um, so we have our production knives and then we have kind of the in-between between our production and customs, mm -hmm. um, which you usually can tell by a signature. Yeah, that on one the, looks like it's green. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, signature on the back as well as that sort of the dagger, mm -hmm. the, the dagger logo. Right, um, okay. And so this particular one's going to go for uh, three, about 350, um, okay. 321, 321. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see that blade again, Walter. What kind of blade? Is it the same length blade there? Yeah. And it looks like it's kind of like a tanto with the uh, serrations on top. Looks good. I like yeah. It. So this is um, this particular blade is called our Hellhound. Okay. Okay, Hellhound. Okay. Nice, nice name to yeah. it. I dig it. I like it. All right. Well, we'll chat about it after. Yeah. If we can, if we can, if we can make some kind of trade deal, you know. Uh, so okay. There's something that possible. That's what it'll be a possible trade. Yeah. Okay. All right. Can something I have a year over here. Yeah. Can I... 
Oh, of something that I have over there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, all right. We can make it. See, look at that. Look at that, Corey. We're we're wheeling and dealing. Yeah, right. see that trading thing? It's a going. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a prime example. <laughs> wheeling, and dealing. wheeling and dealing. Um, okay, very cool. I don't know if there are any other questions and stuff like that. I, I did want to, I don't know if there's other things that people want to talk about. I know I wanted to show you guys something that I got in here. Um, so everyone knows that Fort Scott sponsors the Hank Strange situation for ammo, yes. thankfully. Uh, because you know, I mean, you know, ammo is a huge, massive expense. Check that out. Fort Scott Munitions is coming out with the 450 Bushmaster. Okay. I just, I just got some of these in. If you're looking for ammo, anything that they carry, you can get 10% off. It's like Hank 10. That's the code. Check it out. There's the 450. 450. That's what that looks like. The 450. Um, this might give you a clue to oh, something yeah. that gotta, we're going to be oh. doing. Uh, I'm going to be building. Oh, I got one. Of, so that's a magazine. I'm going to be building a 450 Bushmaster mm -hmm. AR pistol. Okay. Uh, hell's yes. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> hell's yes. Oh, well, guess this, what? Uh, guess what? I'm uh, going to be acquiring what uh, a 458, I think, rated can. Oh, really? OK, we're going to need that. <laughs> Because you know you got to throw some suppression up on these bad boys. Yeah, so I only have like one magazine for it so far, um, and I know you can use um, you can use a you know I've got a I've got a lower actually from Franklin Armory that I'm used to build it up. I've got a barrel. I've got some other things putting all that together. So that's a build. Um, Corey, do you have you 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 build up ARs and stuff like that? No, you said yeah. You I haven't I haven't done a ton of it, but um, I'm actually about to build one right now. I'm about to build a build myself a little. Uh, you know, pistol, AR pistol and five five six more than likely. I can't decide between five five six and three hundred. I'm still kind of debating it. Oh, okay. Um, are you gonna suppress it? Oh, hundred percent. Oh, okay. Um and then what do you you're obviously gonna use that for like short distance stuff or what what's your yeah. plan? What's uh, your plan you know, to use for this thing? It's kinda of, you know, kind of like a little CQB, um almost like I guess what some people call like a truck gun. Mm -hmm. Um but that that's the plan, but you know, I just okay. I want one too. I mean, you know, just uh, they're they're cool. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think about that, Walter? Five five six or three hundred? And also, you guys can chime in right now. Let us know what should Corey do. Should he do the three hundred blackout or the five five six build? Well, here's here's three hundred right here on this SBR arrangement. Mm -hmm. Three hundred is cool. I mean, yeah, yeah, and it's um, you know, I mean, I can already tell Hank, you do exactly what I do, and you buy like things like magazines for guns you don't have yet. <laughs> and then it forces you. That's what I do. I've, I've bought holsters for guns I didn't even own just yeah. to force myself to, to buy them. Yeah. That's see, a, so I've got, a 20, I got a magazine for a 20 millimeter, another 20 millimeter rifle. So that means <laughs> <laughs> 20, 20 millimeter stolen. Yes, Walter. Are you building a pistol? <laughs> A twenty millimeter? Yes. Uh, uh, maybe. Everyone, everyone, I can see all everyone in the chat. They're not really saying this, but everyone's saying you should build a pistol. Um, yeah, you know, in the in the with the question of three hundred blackout or five five six, I would say three hundred blackout. It's mm -hmm. it's nice suppressed. I think you know. Uh, it's uh, the three hundred blackout suppressed sounds awesome. It's, yeah. Um, yeah. It's up there. I mean, obviously, I think you know. Honestly, my favorite suppressed caliber is forty five. I'm because I'm a I'm. I'll break the internet with this, but I'm a 1911 guy. It's my, oh, it's like one of my how favorite dare guns. You. I know. <laughs> I know. Criminal. Criminal. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> oh, that, no, that was the, that was the first uh, handgun I bought was a, it was a Colt 1911. Um, okay. And so may, maybe there's the, the first, you know, the first gun, you know, gun thing in there, but it's, is it's that still what my, you EDC? What do you care? What's your EDC every day? I, I have a couple. I've got, a, um, I've got a couple of uh, Terran, Terran tactical guns that I EDC. Um, Actually Wait, have. you EDC Terran Tactical Competition? Oh yeah, that's no, yeah, no, okay. not like not like the thirty four. Okay, I have okay. carried the, the thirty four before. It's not okay. as hard as you think it is. Oh, um, okay. But, Terran um, Tactical has like uh, you know. Yeah, we've got. Then he makes 1917s, 26. Okay. Uh, All right. <laughs> I've had a twenty six before from him. Yeah. He um, doesn't. He awesome. doesn't have a Glock forty three. He probably does. No, he doesn't. We do. Uh, he does now. He makes a, okay. a, a little Combat Master forty three. <laughs> um, um, I had one, I had one of those, um, okay. you know, kind of, you know, they've gone different places, but, uh, um, I just got in, I don't know if you know, tier one concealed. Um, they're one of the big, big companies that they make these really good appendix holsters. Okay. I, this is going to sound crazy. Um, I actually just got an appendix holster for the 1911. 
um, oh, just because nice. I want just because I wanted it. Um, oh wow! For so, like, okay. Yeah, we'll do we'll do an update video when uh, when I sit down and like you know crush some stuff on accident. And yeah. Then, yeah. 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 Never carry a Penix skin after that, but. We'll <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So well, hey, at least at least you have a holster. Yeah. You know, um, be careful with it. I'm not I'm not a big fan of appendix, but carry, but that's me. Yeah, I mean it's um it has you know it's one of those things, it's sort of like the uh, it's probably kind of like everything there, there's pros and cons to it. Um, you know, I'm I'm a pretty kind of thin guy and you know it's they've always at least my body shape, they've always felt pretty good to me. Um I've always kind of enjoyed the though it's kind of just the way they carry. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of gotten to the point where I used to not, but now I pretty much carry everywhere I can. Um, okay. you know, I used to, especially when I first started, you know, I was like, ah, I mean, it might be inconvenient, but that's, you know, that's the one time something's going to happen. Okay. So other <laughs> than, the, other than the firearm and the knife, what else do you EDC? Do you, do you have light usually? Um, I, I usually actually, I carry like, you know, tiny little light, nothing crazy. Um, I probably should carry something, you know, better. Uh, mm -hmm. but you know, obviously I got the gun and you know, with the, the appendix holsters now, a lot of them, they, you know, they come with a little mag caddy. So, you know, typically you've got the extended mag in there, um, little light, um, you know, then, you know, a diff couple different knives, you know, sometimes I'll carry two if I'm, if I'm feeling crazy just cause you know, you can't decide they're almost like shoes and, you know, shoes and clothes for some people. Yeah. You know, I if can't you're in the knife I business, I wanna... you better carry a bunch of knives, man. Yeah. I mean, sometimes yeah. I don't know what I want to carry. So I carry, yeah. I carry two or three. Yeah, you need to be like nothing fancy. You never know. At any moment, <laughs> you can meet nothing fancy and you have to do a pocket dump. You want to out pocket dump him when it comes to knives and or guns and just keep taking out knives and then he'll love you. Let me know beforehand if there's a chance and I will just I'll just stack them into my <laughs> pockets. Yeah, what were you going to say something, Walter? No, I'm just I'm just thinking about that whole <laughs> pocket what? dump thing you know <laughs> I'll, I'll wear like the sort of like the the watch the guys that sell watches on the on the you know the streets in like new york or whatever i'll just open up my trench coat and just <laughs> all down it oh okay <laughs> okay are you a watch guy you into watches oh i love watches okay um I'm a big citizen and seiko fan obviously i've got okay. an apple watch on uh, okay let's see oh shame on you show that again i know, I know. it's just shame it's so on awesome you yeah um, let's see how dare you you get you get a real watch um, but uh, I, I love uh, I love Seiko and Citizen are, are my okay. my two go tos. Okay, very cool. Um, uh, so quartz um, automatic. What are you? I know I know they've got like uh, is it the Echo something like uh, solar power yeah, launches? So they, like um, okay, a lot of their well. So um, Citizen a couple years ago, I guess Citizen bought Seiko, um, and so all all Seiko and Citizen watches now I believe are are solar powered. Um, mm -hmm. So some you know some. Some of their lines kind of use movement um, to charge them up, but at least all the ones that I currently have um, actually are solar powered. And now the most recent one I got is actually one of their satellite watches, uh, which is kind of cool because when you when you change time zones, it just switches for you. Oh, so, cool! So it's atomic, kind of like atomic timekeeping. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Eco drive. Yeah. yeah, I have a Casio like that. I have a Casio Oceanus like that. Um, and right now, I'm actually rocking an NF. Uh, Nice freaking watches, NFW. <laughs> it's uh, it's quartz. You know, it's nice, big, bulky. The quartz. I've never been a fan of quartz, but quartz is actually pretty tough. So like, you can knock these around and stuff like that. That's and they, you know, they yeah. And NFW, like when you get these watches, they actually give some of the money to um, to military charities. So okay, that's awesome. Yeah. So um, I, I like watches and things like that. I think that's a good part of the EDC. What are you going to say here, Walter? No, I was thinking a Jafari H says, I love the Eco Drive. I haven't had to change the battery once, and it's over 10 yeah. years old. Yeah. Oh, wow, 10 years. Okay, yeah, that's I mean, pretty good. That's, that's pretty good. The Eco yeah. Drive is cool because when you open the drawer, it's sitting in it. It automatically, like, adjusts everything. It, like, comes to life. Yeah. Yeah, there was – so I had a Casio. So I, had, I got one of the Casio solar-powered ones a long time ago, and I think there was something up with the battery because that – I still have it, but I actually sent it to Casio, and it would cost – it would it would be easy, cheaper for me to buy a new one <laughs> get it repaired. than to pay them to fix it. But Casio owns Oceanus, and I think I've had that Oceanus for – I don't know, not 10 years, maybe seven years and stuff. I've never – because, they, you know, the solar power, but it still has a battery in it. Yeah. You know, and it's pretty nice. Like the Oceanus one is, uh, it's uh, titanium. Oh, 
<laughs> so it's titanium, it's solar powered, and it's atomic timekeeping. So no matter where I go, by the time I wake up in the morning, time fixed. Because <laughs> you know, it said they send it doesn't send out the time all day. I think there's like yeah. major times you can force it to pick up the time and all that. So uh, you know, I'm a fan of those kind of things. Yeah. Yeah, what about you, Walter? What are you uh, are you wa rocking a, wa a watch right no, now, Corey? No, I don't have one. I, I didn't I didn't a lot of times at work I don't do it because it's not very yeah. watch friendly. Oh, okay. But um all right. but, or, you know, or I got, take it off. Yeah, I got the Roly and the and a couple of tags and um then the uh, Omega. Mm -hmm. I have Apollo 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 eleven Apollo eleven Omega, the commemorative one. Um, just got, I got that, uh, shine down one, which was kind of a cool watch made here in the U S for the most Shinola, part. Shinola, Shinola. Yeah. Shinola. Yeah. 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 A couple of Casio G shocks. So one's an old school one and one's a newer one. Um, that's what I see you wearing the most, the Casio G shocks, which are pretty well, good. Maybe when I come up there. Yeah. I mean, like a shot show, I'll probably, uh, I'll probably be, uh, rolling the, uh, Rolex or something. Just oh, okay. Flossing. Yeah, I was about to say. I, right before he said that, I was gonna say if we get together at Shot Show, we can compare watches. And then he said Rolex, and I said, ah, yeah, I have one. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> nice. Obama nice. They're not yeah. Rolex. Nice. Yeah. What was that, Walter? Your that's Obama my, money? My Obama Rolex. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very nice. Congratulations on that. Okay. Let me see. There was one last question from David Cardinal here. He says, "Last question, Corey. Have you ever taken one of your OTFs apart?" Um, and then I'm trying to see what most people were saying there with like 300 blackout or, uh, or five, five, six. So I don't know if we got a lot of answers on, on, in on that one. So yeah. Have you ever taken the OTFs apart? Can you uh, walk us through some no, of that? So, uh, obviously I, I mean, technically I've not personally taken any of mine apart. Um, it's pretty easy when you work at Microtech and, you know, and you can just kind of, you know, you can watch everybody else do it. I've, I've watched, I've watched, uh, plenty um, kind of be taken apart and, you know, had little parts replaced here and there and things like that. So I'm, I'm pretty, I'm gotten, you know, pretty familiar with the, the internals of them. Um, they're, I mean, they're, they're obviously pretty hard to, to take apart of, you know, our, our little, I guess, tri triangular esque screws. Um, they are proprietary to us. So it's not the easiest thing to take apart. I, I definitely don't recommend it. Um, yeah, you know, I can't, for the I, I can for sure tell you we've had a, uh, a lot of knives come in where people, t you know, they've, they've found a way to take them apart and then they cannot get them back together. Oh, okay. So you don't, um, so, so if someone has one of your watches, you're right, you're saying don't take it apart and try to service it yourself. It's better to send it into you guys. Oh, a hundred percent. Um, okay. you know, I definitely, I mean, you know, there's, there's, and there's always factors, you know, because you just, you never know what's wrong. Um, if there's ever an issue with, you know, with one of our knives, um, you just never know what's wrong. I, I always recommend um, to to send it in through our warranty program, and and you know we'll we'll get it up and running. Obviously, you know people send people send knives in just to get cleaned and sharpened um, all the time. So now I'm definitely you know I, I just don't recommend taking them apart. I would definitely send them in to us, and we'll we'll typically get them squared away for you. Okay. All right. And even if you get them used and stuff like that. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Still send it in. Okay. Yeah. All right. And there's just certain things that you're not going to like. So what happens if something are there things that come in there? You're like, there's no way in hell where. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, you know, there's certain things, you know, we've, um, you know, it's one of those things you can't do a whole lot about people, you know, using knives um, kind of for their, you know, for unintended purposes. Um, you know, we've, we have, I've seen people actually use, use their knives as hammers, um, believe it or not, and use their knives as, uh, as pry bars. Um, uh -huh. And, you know, so, t you know, typically when you, when you do something like that, um, you know, you, you you know, you break a blade in half trying to, to pry something open. Um, we can typically, uh, repair it. Um, sometimes with some of those things, there's small, you know, some small costs associated with some of that, but you know, any, any basic maintenance or, you know, any basic issues you have, you know, we definitely will take care of. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Um, as long as you're using it, as long as you're using it like a knife in most, probably most situations you're, you're safe. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Walter, did you want to interject? No, yeah, I, I, I can, I can see where there's a lot of broken blades show up, but people are trying to <laughs> right. things and yeah, I mean, because um, I yeah. have to fight that retentation, you know. Sometimes like, oh no, 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 no don't do that, <laughs> don't, don't, don't use. So do you ever get those and people go, no, I didn't use it as a pry bar. 100%. I just woke up one morning and I was looking at the knife and it was perfectly fine, and then it just cracked itself. 
Yeah, I've uh, you know, we've had we've had nice, you know, that you know they just come come back in parts, and you know, there's there's no story to it. You know, you you have no idea how it happened, and uh, you just got to kind of put your head down and go to work and get get them up and running again. <laughs> uh, Mike Bryant says, "What's the warranty?" I know you said it earlier. Can you restate it? Yeah, yeah it's uh, so we have a limited lifetime warranty, so. Uh, for sure, um, you know you're not going to have any trouble out of any knives that we currently produce. Um, which you know we we make a ton of knives. Um, you know we will always you know do our best. Uh, even some of our older knives, you know a lot of um, there's a big market for our vintage knives and um, you know that were made back in the kind of the Vera Beach days. And um, we always do our best yeah. to you know try and fix those and repair those if we can. Yeah. Do those knives have any kind of special markings? The Vero, does it say Vero Beach, Florida? Does it? How do you know that it's vintage? Um, you you can all, uh, by the years. Um, basically, obviously, you know, we moved up in North Carolina was I believe 2014. Um, so and obviously there was still the the Bradford, uh, Pennsylvania location, but um, you can tell they're just um for some of the more I guess technical kind of knife aficionados. Um, just the styling of the blade, you know, certain certain screws we use, certain body styles, um, things like that. It's almost like, uh, you know, when people appraise like paintings or, you know, art yeah. stuff, they could just, it's the little details they can tell when it was made. Um, so, sort of little things like that. Um, obviously, if people have questions, they're always welcome to to shoot me, you know, shoot me messages, you know, and, and I'll, I'll be happy to answer them. Okay, very cool. And uh, I'm going to get, let me see, this is the last question. Uh, this is from Lewis1911. He says, what knife do you like besides Microtech? What knife or knives do you like other than Microtech? Uh, God, that's a tough one. I'm trying to think because, um, you know, remember, I am, I'm still very, I would still be very new, newborn in the, the knife world. Um, See, I'm more of a I'm more of a sword guy, so that's my backup. And the, for when the zombie apocalypse comes, swords. I'm, just throwing, I'm throwing a throwing a katana right okay. on the, right on the back and walking around with it, walking dead okay. style. Okay, all right. Yeah, well, I, need, I, need a little, I need a little more time in the knife in the knife world, and then I'll, I'll have a I'll have a better yeah I'll have a better. Answer but I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, obviously, yeah. like if you, if you work for a gun company, there's other guns that you like. Yeah. And, if, if you work for a knife company, there's other knives that you like. There's no policy at the company. Oh, yeah, for sure. yeah, you're not going to get like they're not going to go through your pockets. And if you've got like a knife, you know, <laughs> oh, well, okay. so now, now that you mentioned it, we or have, something like that, CRKT uh, like mine. Yeah. No, we have done um, we have done some collaborations um, in the past with uh, uh, a guy, a uh, guy who owns uh, Borka Blades. Um, and he actually has some fantastic knives. Um, obviously, we've done our collaborations, our stitch is a collaboration with his, his design and ours. Um, but um, some of the knives that he does independently are, are awesome. If I were probably carrying anything outside, I'd probably find a way to, to snag one of those. Yeah. So Borka, and, Borka Blades. Borka Borka? Yeah, Borka Blades, B-O-R-K-A. Okay. Okay. And then, uh, and then Mike Bryant wants to know, this is the final, final question, I guess. <laughs> uh, what's your most affordable auto? He's just, if like, let's say he's just dying for an auto knife. What's the most affordable entry level um, one that you guys have? Our most affordable, um, is going to be, I don't know if you, if, I don't know if he considers this one an auto. He probably is talking more about our OTFs. Um, that's auto. That's auto. This, Come on. This is auto. So this one, this one's going to, um, come in right, right over $200. Um, okay. And so our our UTX seventies and our UTX eighty fives are going to be uh, sort of in the low two hundreds. So just okay. you know, again, depending on configuration, color, blade style, you know, two two hundred and ten to two hundred and sort of thirty to forty bucks, just depending okay. on different configurations. Um, it always again, it always varies a little bit based off what's in it. Um, but that would be that would be kind of the if you if you kind of want to go to our you know our our more affordable knives that would be where i would definitely start okay very cool walter any other um any other questions here uh yeah i, I was when he was talking about other knives i was thinking i, I was looking over here i'm all glancing over at bayonets and stuff you have any 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 um bayonets liking of bayonet military type bayonets knives <laughs> things like that um, I think yeah, the closest thing was I think that that curry that we we used to make um, that one that one's bayonet ish in a way. Okay. You, you can you can Rambo and makeshift it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think you guys should make an out the front bayonet 
Alto. You know? Yeah. Maybe even it could go on a, on a pick rail, on a pick team. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know. You never that, know. That would be so awesome. <laughs> with, a, with, a, with a remote control on back in the, like on the, on the. Like on a, the, yeah, like a light little, switch. Yeah, like a little switch that flicks it out. <laughs> no, that would be cool. Seriously. Yeah. Hey, I'll get, I'll get to work on it. I'm not, I'm not the guy that designs it, but I'll get to work on it. I'll, yeah. I'll start the drawing process. Yeah, Jafari H says Blade HQ usually has some good sales going on. You guys are sold through Blade HQ. Yeah. So, um, we yeah. actually, so on our website, um, we have a, um, a dealer list and, um, it's pretty cool. You can actually uh, separate it kind of by your region. Um, so where you are and find your closest dealers. Um, but that gives you all of our dealers and, uh, you can go online and, and look for kind of some of their inventory, um, and see what they have. We, we have some, some big ones that, that have some really awesome knives. Okay. And then Brian quick says Microtech um, had an OTF with what they called a bayonet grind. Yes, so we, I don't know if I have one on me, um, but we do have, uh, I haven't seen any come through the shop in a while, but we do have a bayonet, um, a bayonet style blade. So it still comes in the same, um, the same Ultratech body and just the blade style is, um, is like a bayonet. Okay, that seems, what's Walter, see what's Walter is pictures. this what we're talking about, Walter? Is it something like this? Well, the shape of the blade, I was saying, let me put it by my white face here. Like, ah. Hold it up a little. There you go. I guess that would be a bayonet. This is, a, this is an M1 carbine bayonet, so okay. I don't know if that style of blade is what he's speaking of. Yeah. But, uh, um, I it's I think you said bayonet grind. So okay, you listen. You know what? We've I, I want. I mean, Corey. You know, you went through two hours gauntlet of questions here. Yeah. I what do you it. think, Walter? How did he do? How did he do? He did fine. He did fine. Yeah. He talked. He talked his ass off. That's what. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. If, if anyone who knows me, that is that, that is one thing that is unanimous. Whether people love me or hate me, I I can I can talk. Yeah, that's good. So um, tell us real quick, like how can people get in touch with you? What social media should they follow and all that kind of stuff to keep up with Microtech? Yeah. Um, so obviously uh, our social media, um, Instagram and Facebook, we are under Microtech Knives. Um, if you want to follow me, because you will start, you will kind of see some cross, um, some kind of cross pollination of some of the Microtech stuff. I'm on Instagram, uh, Corey underscore Campbell 24. Um, Corey spelled C-O-R-E-Y. Um, and also, you know, you have, like I said, I'll, I'll give you my email address again um, for people who have questions and things like that. Um, C Campbell at microtechknives.com. And uh, so you can, you can find us, find us on there and we can, uh, we have, we have a lot of fun. We post a lot of cool stuff. It's a, it's a hard job. Yeah. 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 I'm I'm sure with it knives, is. Playing with knives yeah. all day. Yeah, so so tough. Someone has to do it. I mean, listen, I I appreciate you coming on, educating us about knives and things like that. I know I personally want to do more knife videos and things. And uh, uh, Patrick was talking to me about that. Um, I actually saw him today. We've got a a shot show video where we're talking about shot show stuff that should be coming out. I uploaded it. It probably go out to Patreons, and then we'll we'll get it out there for everyone else. So I mean, I definitely want to thank you for coming on, Walter. You want to like tell the folks how they can get in touch with you. Here. Yeah, Facebook, Instagram. Um, hopefully tomorrow I might be posting a picture of the real Shrebog stock. So um, classical stock. The uh, if I get the anodizing back tomorrow, we'll be putting together and posting it and getting ready for the shot show. So uh, stay tuned. Okay, awesome. Make sure you follow Walter on Safety Harbor Firearms on like everything, including Instagram. Yeah, yeah. yeah. everything. Yes, absolutely. Corey, you did a great job, man. Thanks Thank for coming you on. So this much. Yeah, this is your first podcast. Uh, you know, I appreciate you coming on. We're definitely going to try to get some uh, micro stu tech stuff out there for you guys and, uh, you know, get some of that kind of stuff going, some other knives as well going on here. And hopefully we'll we'll bump into you at SHOT Show. Oh, 100%. We definitely we have to uh, definitely got to plan the uh, the shooting. I need I need some more full auto in my life. Yes, we can make that happen. We can make that happen. Maybe so. so. Yes, absolutely. All right, Corey, stay right there. I'm going to end it. Perfect. I want to thank everyone in the chat for hanging in here with us. I see lots of people thanking you, Corey, for coming on. Uh, make sure you guys go follow uh, Microtech Knives on Instagram, Facebook, and all the other places, and uh, shout them out for coming on the show. You know, it's always cool when companies like this come on and talk to us. We appreciate it. Uh, any final words from anyone? Uh, good night. Yeah. Okay. Thank, We're out thank, of here. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Hopefully, we'll uh, we'll have to definitely do it again when we come out with some. Uh, you know, twenty nineteen is going to have some new stuff. So when we get some more new stuff, we'll uh, we'll have to do it again. 
Absolutely. Yes, you're absolutely invited back. That would be very cool. Thanks, Thanks guys. Man. See you tomorrow, Friday. I have no clue what's going on tomorrow, but it's going to be fun. <laughs> we'll see you guys. We're out of here. Peace. Yeah.